me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. I'm down 78 pounds because of found and I'm just getting started. And because of found, I have more confidence in myself. I'm actually in photos with my family. I'm getting my steps in each day. Found has changed my life. Go to joinfound.com to see if the program's right for you. If you have health problems, you may think life insurance is hard to get. Colonial Pen has an easy solution. Guaranteed acceptance. Whole life insurance. It's easy because you don't need a medical exam and there are no health questions. Visit colonialpen.com for more information and a free gift. Flash not alone. The Michael K. Show on Yes is brought to you by Untuck It. Shirts designed to be worn untucked. Shop now at untuckit.com. Oh boy, that jet game was not good. That was not yeah, good. Usually we come, we bump in with a highlight. No, something. there's no highlight. Uh, listen, Jet fans can hate me. They think I'm a Jet hater or whatever the case may be. That's not a playoff team. Oh. That's a great defense. They made a great quarterback look less than ordinary. They were suffocating, suffocating. The offense can't do it. And I'm not even going to put all of the blame, Don. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to put it all on Zach Wilson. He doesn't have time. He doesn't have weapons other than Wilson and, and Hall. The, I mean, Lazard had one of the worst games you'd ever see no, a big-time player have. I mean, uh, Ozama well, dropped the touchdown. Player? Awful. They're That's not a great offense. Well, their offensive line stinks. And all the pre-snap penalties, I'm sorry, fall on the coach. We're going to have to you know, bring it up to Sala. Again, penalties killing them. But there is no way in the world, guys, seriously. And unfortunately, the two teams that are in this boat both play in this city where a 14-point lead is completely insurmountable. Once it, once it became 14 nothing with more than half the fourth quarter left, it was over. It was over. Over. Wait, it was it was it was it was 17 3, 14 nothing and 17 3. Oh, and then it went back to 14. Right, but again, got, yes, it got so, to 11 at one point. Right, it was right. 11 at one point, went back to 14. So they kicked that But it field felt goal. insurmountable on the first time. No, at no, 14 listen, nothing. I, I I was I didn't say anything to the guy. I let it go. Finish up the Nick game. I'm packing up my uh, my stuff because we do a little back and forth with Pat O'Keefe in the post game, and they're letting all the By fans. By the way, go. Big Nick win. Big, yeah, needed we'll get, that, we'll get needed to that one. And Randall was back. Guy in full jet garb, hat, jacket, jersey. I'm like, well, you're in the wrong building. And he's like, the Jets are going in for a touchdown. They're on the 11 yard line. I'm like, so <laughs> what makes you think they're going in for a touchdown? They live in the red zone. They don't score touchdowns. They don't. Did you see this stat? This will blow you away if you didn't see it. Over the last five years, here are the top three teams in games without a touchdown scored. Number three, the Houston Texans with eight. Number two, the New York Giants with nine. The Jets are number one with 16 how many since when? Sixteen since in the last when? five years. Five years. games without a touchdown. Five years? <laughs> Sixteen I, times. You know, I, I, That's I, an I, entire season of not scoring a touchdown. I tweeted uh, last night during the game. I don't know why I bothered to t <clears throat> qualify with that. Watching this team play offense is so painful. The only team that you can compare to it is the Giants. Right. They are they, we, they they are playing a brand of football right now. These two teams. It, it's all it's unwatchable. Well, that's that's the funniest part of all of this, though. Well, you know they're, they're going to make the playoff. Uh, they might not. They're they're eleventh now in the AFC. They have not lost a tiebreaker with the Chargers, a team that's most likely going to have the same record as them. They're an abysmal team. They're a great team. I thought that Troy Aikman had one of his strongest games ever. Yeah. I mean, he was just spitting truth. He said, this is a terrible offense and a great defense. And I can't say it any better. Their defense is absolutely superb. Their offense is terrible. The, let, let's give it up for the defense for a second. I mean, last night was not just a good performance. The, the Chargers did nothing. They basically offensively did nothing. Special teams gifted them a touchdown. Then you had uh, Zach Wilson put the ball on the ground twice. Late in the game, a another turn over and over yeah. again. It but, was never the defense, Don, that did it. The other stat 
that you, it, it's, it sounds like somebody that really needs to go on a date that dug this up. But there are people that get paid a lot of money to figure out these stats. The Jets were the first team last night in the Super Bowl era to have five sacks, allow the opposition less than 200 yards, and lose by three touchdowns. Like it, It's just incredible. There was another stat there, too, that just quickly escaped me. Like, they're doing – it's weird. When they win games, it's like, how did they do that? And when they lose games, it's, oh, my God, how did they lose? Did they? Because the defense is great. Now, listen, the special teams for the first time had the breakdown with the punt return, which you just can't have happen. Because the punt was – he outkicked his coverage, right, but, and it was but, a little low. But for the most part – They've got great special teams and great defense. It's not enough in this league. It's an offensive league. You've got to score points. You've got to score touchdowns. You can't ask your defense to shut the opposition down. They did a great job against a really good offensive team to give them plenty of chances to win that game, and the offense just can't do it, Michael. No, it, they couldn't even score a, a lousy token touchdown at the end of the game. I, I don't want to go through the same thing again. We've been doing this since the summer. Peter and I have been on the same train. How do you go into the season with Zach Wilson but, as your backup quarterback? It, it's inexcusable. But, it's professional malfeasance. However, He's not a quarterback that's going to win in this league. I am not going to sit here and spend a day. I don't want to take phone calls from people supporting Zach Wilson. I don't want to be known as the guy that supports Zach Wilson. Michael, it is what it is. But isn't last night kind of a reminder that it might not necessarily have been a panacea with Rodgers? It would be way better. But your offensive line can't protect the quarterback. So would Rodgers eventually get hurt in another way? All the pre-snap penalties. Now, now I'm sure Rodgers would help with that too. But still, penalties are killing them. Uh, and why are they, Why do they get off the slow starts? They, they never get, a, even in games they win, they spot the opposition points. Philadelphia <laughs> scored on their first possession. Always. The Giants scored on their first possession. And that's why I also, in, in spite of the fact that, obviously, zerline has been great, and generally speaking, special teams has been good, you can't let them get up from yesterday. Because your special teams is asked at this point. You cannot allow them to get down 7 nothing. You do not have enough offense on this team to make a mistake well, like that. When they start in the hole like that, guys, come on. We all knew the game was over but, then. But, Peter, their offense is so non-existent, or if you want to say just so pathetic, that the other factors of the team, the special teams and the defense, have to be perfect. So, I mean, the defense allowed that one touchdown drive when they started on the 50. They can't right. allow it, and it's not fair. Their defense is but, is amazing. And their offense is so predictable and so bad. And, again, I'm not jumping totally on Zach Wilson. No, he that, was mostly bad. No, he's awful. He was awful. He but, was, he, but you could say he was awful for many reasons, too. The penalties, as Don said, the fact that he has no time to throw, because when he has time to throw, he's got a great arm, and he made some nice passes. Mm -hmm. But can we, since, since you guys are both currently playing the role of sort of not beating up Zach. Well, I, I beat him up enough. Can I just throw out one moment that I have to beat him up on that just shows you're just like, what do you not, the, 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 the play when the play breaks down and he's clearly going to take off for a first down and decides at that moment to pitch the ball to Brees Hall when he had like eight yards in front yeah. of him to well, just it, scamper for a first down. He, there's something that doesn't connect it doesn't that with fire. every other quarterback it, fires. It, it doesn't fire. And, and and that's really the difference. They all If you've made it to the NFL level, they've all got big arms. They've all got ability. But it's the idea to be able to see it. Like, you can look at DeVito on Sunday. Like, yeah, he could throw the ball, but there were times guys are open for an instant. He doesn't see it, and then the play goes away because you've got to fire. You have to fire immediately. It's not just physical. It's the mental part of the game, too. Also, the game was already over. They're down 14. They're, they're close to midfield, I guess maybe at the 35, 40-yard line. I don't know if you remember, like, that last – he takes a 17-yard sack. Like, you were going to go for it. Throw the ball away. You're going to go for it. But now you can't go for it because it's fourth and 27 because you took a 17-yard sack. That killed him in the Giant game, too. How do you take a sack on fourth down? What, was Just it, throw it up for grabs. What, Don, wasn't it one of the field goal drives? They, they moved the ball down the field pretty quickly. And then on second and third down, he was sacked back yeah. to back and just it, killed. Yeah, it's, it's brutal. He can't operate in the red zone. He cannot do right. it. He cannot but, get a ball into the end zone on a throw. And the one that he did, Ozama dr uh, dropped see, at the end of the game. That's the other Couldn't thing. Couldn't even too. get a cosmetic touchdown. He's dropping there. Lazard's dropping passes. A Lazard's penalty. The penalty. You see, so, and, and then Garrett Wilson had um, well, the his fumble, temper. Fumble, yeah. well, well, the fumble, but then he lost his temper and took an illegal block to the back on the next play. And they in the blue, it just, there's a lot going on here. So, yeah, Aaron Rodgers would help. And, and we, as we look to trying to survive 
and stay alive if Rodgers is going to come back. And he hinted that maybe he'll be back in a few weeks, although he debunked that on McAfee. We'll get to that in a second. Or even if he's around next year. Guys, you want to win a championship. There's a lot of other things you got to clean up. So not apologizing for Zach Michael. I don't think you're apologizing no. for him either. And we can't kill the defense. The defense, to me, you can't play better. Because no, they're on the field all day. And as you said, you got to be perfect. They may be the but, best. They may be the best in the league. But they're, they're that. But they're this very, offensive very line good. has got to clean things up, and the pre-snap penalties, and the not ready to start games. I mean, that was a huge, huge game yesterday, and it just—it's killer. It really is a killer. Now they're still very much alive, but again, guys, how much better do you have Whoa. to play to navigate through the rest of this schedule? They're very much alive by accident. They should not have won the Giant game. They did. You can't take it away from them, but through the Giants' absolute ineptitude is why they won that game. They should have lost. They got outplayed. They got outplayed yesterday. Every single expert on ESPN picked the, uh, the Jets. Everyone. Everybody is, everybody is drinking the Kool-Aid with this team. It's not a great team. It's not a playoff team. A great defense does not make a playoff team. And the offense doesn't have to be great. All the offense has to be is decent, not the worst. And it's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah, well, and Jet fans could call in, and I, I saw it yesterday, too. Kay's such a hater. you got to stop him out the Jets. Look with your eyes. Stop being uh, fanboys. Look with your eyes and see what the way this team is playing. And this team is absolutely dreadful. They can't get out of their own way. And you could blame Zach Wilson, but the penalty that's on the coaches the unimaginative offense that's on the coaches as well and one other thing Aaron Rodgers so great for the team the two addendums to Aaron Rodgers being on the Jets Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb have been dreadful and Randall Cobb was a healthy scratch with a team that doesn't have that many uh, wide receivers Randall Cobb couldn't get on the 58 man a 53 man roster and Alan Lazard almost lost the game by himself those are the things that came with Aaron Rodgers. So Aaron Rodgers better get back and lead this team to the Super Bowl because right now all of this is a mess. They're not a great team. They're not a playoff team. They're just not. Yeah, Billy Turner's here too because of him, and he hasn't been good. It's it, there's there's a lot going on here, and it stinks because there's there, there there's such a chance here, but this NFL. Cleveland's got a great defense, but their offense has been dysfunctional with Watson and out. And where, where are they? Four and four. I mean, this is not the old days where you know the the the, the Bears can just have a uh, an okay offense and their defense was dominant. Or even the two thousand Ravens, you got to score points in this league. But, but, you got to do it. The Ravens score. Ravens have a great defense. They score points. 49ers have a great defense. They score points. But at least Deshaun Watson is a, a legitimate right, quarterback. He'll, eventually, when he's healthy. See, that's the thing is they'll eventually figure it out. They'll stay healthy right, and they'll so score points. Here's the question. Is it time to replace Zach? Is it time to put in Trevor well, Simeon? I, I, I don't know why you wouldn't give it a shot at this point. I guess they won't, Michael, because they he's not even he's on the practice squad. He's not even backing up. So why even have the conversation when it's not going to happen? But why wouldn't you try something else to see if maybe you can get a touchdown? We don't we don't register wins based on yardage it's based on points scoring touchdowns they don't score touchdowns so would i give trevor Simeon a try yeah but the the jets won't he's on the practice squad he's not if zach wilson got hurt on the first play from scrimmage then they, he would trevor Simeon wouldn't be able to play he's not dressed but you can get him out the practice squad and but, start him but why aren't you getting him i don't the know practice squad i don't know i don't know again it's it, it's that it, 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 it was same thing with the giants why is devito on your team when we saw Josh Dobbs go out there, didn't start because he didn't know the offense, and then balls out and wins the game on his isn't own. It, isn't it just another crazy thing, though? Like, how much of it is it about the team they're on and the systems they're in? Like, what well, is it? How could a guy like Joshua Dobbs, he was on a team that was intended to lose. They made him the starter. We all laughed. <laughs> Joshua Dobbs, a couple weeks in, you go, that guy's not too bad. Now he got picked up by a team who's trying to have a chance. Why can the Why can the teams here well, not find someone? Uh, is it the arrogance of the coaches? Well, are my system's too complicated for you to understand. You've got to sit there and watch film for 37 days before you can understand my genius. Or is it, you know what? Make a turn at the Jeep. Stop at the manhole, and I'm going to find you open. If, if I'm desperate to score points, 
Why can't it be that simple? And, and, Just do it. And also, good coaches and, can make it work because I'll tell you what, the Vikings offense is complicated. That guy is like a guy who really knows how to manipulate defenses, and the guy came in, didn't even know the names of the players, but, and engineered a drive but you know to win. What? We, need to, we need to win to save our, team, save our uh, season. You know, let's go out there and we'll figure it out. We'll, 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 we'll get you to know the system later. Now let's just try to win. And also, Nathaniel Hackett, can you do something that doesn't involve Aaron Rodgers? Now, they tried a little something different. They tried to speed things up, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, right? So they tried speeding things up early and still nothing, nada. It's, it's, it, it, I was so angry watching that game because this defense is championship level worthy. That's how good this defense is to make that quarterback look so inept, so inept. And you can't put an offense that's even decent. How about this about how much the defense is on the field? This is according to Rich Samini on X. The Jets have the lowest third down rate in 45 years, according to Elias. It could be longer, but their third down stats only go to 1978. They can't. No. They can't stay on the field. They can't pick up third downs. It was because um, it was right after Vietnam, and they realized that you know we're not at war anymore. So now we can actually write stats down. Pre nineteen seventy eight, nobody bothered to to track anything, which is ridiculous. But anyway, the, it, and now you get in these obvious passing situations. They're just going to pin their ears back. And you know what's going to happen, Michael? You know what's next? Zach Wilson's going to get hurt. And and also, were you thinking this, guys? I, I don't I would not have played him in that final suit. So you weren't winning the game. They're pinning their ears back. You could see they're all just licking their chops to get sacks. Why am I having my quarterback get beat up? Why why is he in there that last what just to, to score a token touchdown, which they didn't anyway. I think that's what it was for, to give him some they wanted to give him some confidence. Nah. But I I'm sitting here right now. The phones, you know the number. I want the Zach Truthers to call up. I want them. The ones that rip me for saying he's not, oh, look, his, his, uh, his completion percentage is 68%. He doesn't put the ball in the end zone. He doesn't get third down. Zach Truthers, call wow. up. I want to hear I from you. you. You know what the Zach Truthers are going to do? They're going to piggyback off your comment that they're dropping passes, the offensive line stinks, and that it's not all Zach, which there's truth to it. It's not all also, Zach, but it's a lot of Zach. But also... Uh, everything kind of goes through the quarterback. So how much of these pre-snap penalties because of him? Because remember, when Aaron Rodgers came in, he was the one preaching to the guys about no my cadence. We can't have pre, uh, we can't have uh, penalties before the snap. So how much is that on the quarterback? The drop passes, they're, some of them are just awful drops, but some of them are not put in the right place. It always comes back to the quarterback, guys. All right, let's take some phone calls. 1-800-919-3776. Let's go to Jorge in New Jersey. Jorge. What's up, guys? All right, I am not a Jets or Giants fan, but dude, I'm, this is getting criminal, and it's insane. This kid is equivalent to Paxton Lynch. The only difference is Paxton Lynch got five career NFL starts. The fact that they keep letting this kid go out and play quarterback in the NFL is insane. Stop. I don't want to watch it no more. Change him. Let him go. Stop. Put in Trevor Simeon. Trevor Simeon can't throw touchdowns. I've watched him for the Broncos. He had great games. Uh, I get Zach Wilson is garbage. Garbage. Stop letting him play. I'm tired of watching. Well, I think a lot, a lot of what's going on. I, I like think, that. That could be the point. Oh, anyway, he wasn't even a, a Jets not, fan. No, no, that was literally just it's anger for fan. being a football fan. Right. And, I, and by the way, and I get it. And I don't want to beat the kid up anymore. And I'm sick of us beating him up. But the Jets have been lying to our face now for two years, trying to tell us, that, Michael, we're seeing a pile of horse manure. And they're like, that's a that's a sirloin steak. Just you got to wait. It'll turn into well, a sirloin steak. Unfortunately, it's not. Unfortunately, Don has brought this up a couple of times in the last couple of months. I think there's something political in this. I think there's something political. He was the second choice in the draft, and they don't want to look like complete idiots but, for having drafted him. So let's have but, him back up Rodgers. God forbid, so, you know, he could, he could fill in for two or three games. They didn't think that Rodgers would be out for the whole year. He can't play in this league at this point. He should not be the quarterback of a team that has a defense that, that, that is that stout. He can't. He shouldn't. But as Don said, the milk is out of the udder, the cow's out of the barn, whatever but, you want to say. What about the toothpaste? The season's over now. But, toothpaste but, is but, out but, of the tube. Here's the scary thing, though, because you can you can pass that along when you're winning games. But now if you lose the season and Aaron Rodgers is right and Mike Greenberg's right and he's available to come back in week 13, week 14, week 15, you think he's going to come back to a team that's just playing out the string? 
So as if you're Salah, if if you're Douglas, you gotta find you a way. gotta find a way to win to keep things alive. If Rodgers comes back. And you got to ask yourself, I don't know, I don't watch Trevor Simeon. I, I've seen him play. I don't know what he's like now, but you went out and signed him. Shouldn't you start thinking about trying to develop something for him to try to win you game? You are not scoring touchdowns. And Rodgers might, how would that look, Michael, if Rodgers is cleared to play, but won't because the Jets are mathematically eliminated? Well, he, today's Tuesday, so he's on with Pat McAfee, and he, Pat asked him, do the Jets have to be competing for you to return? I have a lot of faith in our guys, and I feel like we're going to be in the mix for sure. That is a very small part of the thought process because it's really just the day-to-day -day trying to get better, trying to keep strengthening the calf, trying to, you know, as we move into this, you know, more flexibility down there. But it's going to be a process, small gains every single day. Um, and then hopefully there's a chance to have that conversation. Obviously, you know, we got to be in the mix. There's, there's no doubt about it. But, but more than that, i got to be able to be healthy, to be able to move, to be able to protect myself, to be able to have strengths. Uh, in all the throwing positions. I can do a little simulated gun drop, left, right, left, right. I even did a little crossover last night. I'm feeling a lot, <laughs> feel a lot more strength in the Achilles, but we're a long way off from being able to be under center and get out to an outside zone and get out to a keep fake. And it's going to be a process, but I like where I'm at. I mean, definitely, obviously, ahead of schedule. Uh, I think Don said a mouthful earlier. Well, why would he want to come back and, and play behind this line? They don't have weapons either. They don't. They have Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. That's what they have. That's not a weaponized offense. It's just not. Why would he why would he rush back to this? Why would he put his health in peril to come back and play for no, a team it, it also, that can't protect and him? And I'm not going to kill him for that. I mean, uh, listen, he he wants to play. He's going to be 40 years old in December. He came to the Jets because he thought that gave him the best chance to win. He liked the talent here. But right now, this line would not be able to protect him. He'd be foolish to come back if the games are meaningless. Crazy. Be crazy. Todd and Olean. Todd. Oh. Oh, okay. Hello, Todd. Yeah, hey, Michael. Hello, um, Todd. Listen, you can time to explain this. You can hear me, right? Yeah, oh, sure. sure. Okay, listen. I'm not a Jets fan. Love when Namus was there. Loved it when they beat the Colts. But anyways... The deal is, is I'm watching the game last night, and I'll agree with you on three things. One, the offensive play calling stunk. Three games I watched this weekend, awful, for OCs. My Notre Dame team, the Bills, and the Jets last night. Well, one thing I'll tell you, no Zach Wilson at this stage of his career, maybe he'll reach it someday, maybe he'll be an NFL quarterback. But you got to get some receivers that can catch. Your Ohio State product. He dropped the ball last night, had his hands around it, and boom, it's it's popping out. Did Tight you mean Garrett Wilson? Well, I Garrett, Garrett, we're not, we're not going to, you're Garrett, not going to. Okay. Garrett, Garrett Wilson is the best, best thing they have. If the call starts with the, the Ohio State receiver, I, I, I'm i sorry, bud. We're, we're, we're off to a bad start. Sherwayne in Brooklyn. Sherwayne. Hi, hi, guys. Um, I, I mean, I've been a supporter of Zach Wilson for a long time, but I think it's time we just... It's time for us to move on. But the thing about that is, is Simeon or Ball a, a better option than him? It can, well, here's the question, Shereen. Can he be worse? Can he be worse? I mean, Simeon's been in the league a while. Can he be worse? Because all the people that look at Zach through green glasses and see something that is not there, including the coaching staff and the front office, they've got to have a, a come-to-Jesus meeting with themselves. They have to. He's not good. He's not good. He can't do it. He's had opportunity after opportunity. He has glimpses. I, I give you all of that. He has glimpses. There was a drive yesterday that he looked great as they moving it, but then into the red zone, it's a different Two sacks. Oh, well, see, that the red zone is a major, major issue. And I know Robert Sala is going to tell you that we're, we're getting there. Great. You're great between the 20s. Got to score touchdowns. The, their yeah. offense essentially is Erlon. That's it. Yeah, and good luck kicking field goals in your way to, even even as a seven seed, to be able to get to the playoffs. All right, we're waiting on Robert Sala. We'll talk mm -hmm. to him at some point this hour. Continue to take your phone calls. Hey, the Hess truck is back, and it's better than ever. Dinner al fresco. All worries forgotten. Broken fridge with food that is rotten. Birthday cake for everyone. This blown fuse is no fun. Getting him to brush is no longer a chore. The sink is overflowing onto the floor. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered parts of appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. 
protect what you don't expect. Sign up today at AHS.com. I was tired of being told by my doctor that my weight was always the root of my problems. Found changed that. I'm down 78 pounds because of Found, and I'm just getting started. Found paired me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. Their team of behavioral experts helped me to make lasting changes. Finally, I found a program that fits my lifestyle, improved my health, helped me reclaim my confidence. Try it out. Head to joinfound.com to start. All right, here we go. It's a big responsibility to be a designer. Dagny Dover is a bag brand based in New York City, founded by three women. We make hyper-functional, performance-driven bags. That's like a mouthful. We're all about getting the most out of life. When you're organized and you have your things together, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can live life intentionally. Oh, <laughs> it's pronounced D Dagny Dover. Dagny means new dawn. It's a new dawn for fashion. See everything your store can do with tools from Square. Your inventory automatically restocks, so you never run low. Your online store stays open 24-7, so you're always ready to sell. Your payments are processed in seconds, so customers can breeze through checkout. And with one account to manage it all, you've got more time for taking time out. Get your all-in-one retail system by signing up at Square.com today. For far too long, millions of Americans have been strapping on uncomfortable work boots pushed by out-of-touch corporate types. Hey! Whoa. To design boots and apparel that hardworking men and women actually want, you have to get on the job site and listen. And that's why Brunt names gear after guys like us. Apart from making our boots and apparel innovative, reliable, and insanely comfortable, we back all of our gear with a 30-day on-the-job risk-free trial. You deserve better, you deserve Brunt. Try any of Brunt's gear on the job for 30 days risk-free. If you have health problems, you may think life insurance is hard to get. Colonial Pen has an easy solution. Guaranteed acceptance. Whole life insurance. It's easy because you don't need a medical exam and there are no health questions. Visit colonialpen.com for more information and a free gift. <laughs> When you order Domino's online, we'll give you a free pizza to use for a future pizza emergency. <laughs> so you'll have a free pizza when you need it most. Get your emergency pizza when you order Domino's online. There you go. Thank you. Bye. Dinner's ready. This may look like a holiday shopping showdown, but it's a Nissan sales event to add. Good thing my Rogue has intelligent all-wheel drive. So does my Altima. Get 0% financing for 36 months on the Rogue Platinum. Rogue has best-in-class fuel economy among gas engines. Better hurry. These offers won't be back in stock.
raise funds, save lives. Sign up at Movember.com. Now, at the end of the game, um, a microphone picked up Aaron Rodgers telling Derwin oh, James, I heard it. Uh, give me, uh, when, are you, when are you getting back? Give me a couple of weeks. And here's what Aaron Rodgers said on McAfee about that. I've known Derwin for a while. We got the same agency. Really have a lot of respect for him and his game. He came over and dabbed me up during the game. and Good to see him after the game. I didn't realize that was going to get caught there. I mean, obviously that was said with a little tongue-in-cheek there. It'd be nice to be able to be back in a couple weeks. That's probably not anywhere near a realistic timeline. But a couple is, you know, could be a few, could be a lot. It was more of a phrase that didn't have a specific timetable. But, yeah, I said it smiling, joking. You know, he was talking about how, you know, he's excited for me to get back on the field. At some point, I joked it'd be a few weeks, but obviously it's going to be more than a couple weeks. Can, can I say something that's not going to be popular? If Aaron Rodgers doesn't lead the Jets to a Super Bowl, forget about winning it, a Super Bowl in this time here, I don't know if it's all worth it. It's a, it's a handful. But I liked what he said there. That was at least straightforward. Right, but it, everything is like, it, it, everything is so weighted heavily. That's Everything a, that he says, he, he takes the air out of the room. Now, if you take me to the Super Bowl, you can do whatever you want. But if not, it's well, I mean, a, a but, lot of heavy lifting. But here's where I'll, where I'll push back. Well, except you kind of can't. You can't really. I was going to say, the good news is his existence gives you hope right now as a Jets fan. Because otherwise, you're looking at what they have right now at QB and you want to blow your brains out. Yeah, but if you didn't have But if you didn't have him, you'd get another someone else. Right. Because but, Zach Wilson couldn't start last year. Right, and the reason Zach is currently there is because they decided to go get Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers thought that he could mentor him and, and turn well, him into it. Yeah, or they weren't able, for some reason, Joe Douglas, God bless him, was not able to walk and chew gum at the same time. And they couldn't sign Jacoby Brissett at the same time as signing Aaron Rodgers. So they decided to have, I, I just still don't understand that. I get it's a lot. Is it? But what, it how did, but, but what, how, who's hurt by it? I'm sure the Jets are gobbling this up. They're on national television. They're not. Oh, that they're, a lot. They're not, um, they're not flexing out of the Jets because they still get a great number because they got a great fan base and there's still a lot of attention on them. And, and I think the Jets do like the attention that they're getting, even, even in a bad moment, it's, hey, Rodgers could be coming back. Stay engaged. You never know. So I think the Jets, I don't know. But if he doesn't the take them to it. a Super Bowl, is it worth it? Well, what did you lose? You lost, uh, Peter just said, you lost getting a real quarterback. Well, that I don't. Be I, I, yeah, but I don't know what any of those real quarterbacks give them as good a chance to win a championship. All right, so they'd have Derek Carr right now, who's in an injury plague season. I don't know if he's ever going to win win with Carr. Well, his, they've got a chance to win next eight? year. His, his team is five and three, Derek Carr. Uh, no, I, 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 I get that. Not nearly the team the Jets have. No, I get it. Although in, in that division, who knows what the Jets' record would be. But... Uh, yeah, so you're telling me if they go to the playoffs next year, lose a championship game in 2026, and he retires, then well, that wasn't worth it. Mm, I don't know. Well, but, but but what is it? Uh, again, what is it hurting? We don't know what any of the quarterbacks they would have gotten we know that would do. But uh, any quarterback you would have gotten is better than Zach Wilson. Any yeah, I understand this year, but it's possible. I don't. I don't know this for a fact, but it is possible. But by Rodgers missing this year, you can tack on another year at the end. Like maybe all he was going to give you was twenty three, twenty four. Right now, you might get twenty twenty five because he missed this year. But Hopefully. I still need to see what Rodgers does. Right. I think that's the key. But I, I never felt it was Super Bowl or bust, Michael. And now, when you're looking at this team in totality, do you think with Aaron Rodgers, this team would be winning a championship, or with these pre snap penalties and these drop passes? And this lack of imagination on offense, would it all just go away? Maybe, because I think Rodgers is that good. But also, maybe Rodgers would have gotten hurt on the next play because this offensive line's terrible. I, I think if Rodgers remained healthy, they'd be much better than that. Oh, right e easily much better, but that's not the question. The question is, would they be the best team in football? But they'd be a playoff team, and they'd have a chance to win Oh, well, clearly Bowl. they would be a playoff With team. With this defense, they'd have a chance to win a Super Bowl. Let's uh, go to Vic and Wayne. Vic. Hey, guys, I'm a frequent caller. Um, Mike, I'm on board with you as far as Zach is bad. But the offensive line, I got a couple points, quick points to make, and it's based on one of the calls we, calls we spoke about last time. Mm -hmm. So Zach Wilson had the ball. 
one a, a few plays last night, about five seconds. Three and a half seconds to five seconds is is an it's it's an eternity in the NFL. The guy gets sacked with five point one seconds. That's not the offensive line, and I'm not here to defend them because I'm a diehard Jets fan. I'm a die. I didn't want Aaron Rodgers, but I think given the defense and um, the offensive line, yeah, he got hurt in the first game. But if Aaron Rodgers was playing right now, he would not hold the ball for five and a half seconds, five point one seconds. He would have found the receiver, went through his progressions, I agree. and then threw the ball away. Okay, so Zach Wilson is making. 90% of those sacks last night was due to Zach Wilson holding on to the ball. Wait, that's like, that's a little high, Vic. It's a little high. I mean, you, they, they, please, they've got please. two great rushers that we're going to get now, to them. As far as, I'm sorry, Michael, but as far as Alan Lazard and uh, his other buddy, Randall Cobb. Over, Cobb. I'm not, Randall Cobb. I'm not big fans, but they were brought over to operate in Aaron Rodgers' offense. Zach Wilson can't even he's probably not even what Aaron Rodgers was in high school so those guys are going to be in that but, so but, but Vic, let me let me stop you for yeah, a second let me stop for a second uh, for ball thrown in your hands I don't yeah. care who threw it you catch the ball if, if you tell me they're not getting open then I could say maybe it's system related although at some point adjustments have to be made when you're a professional but catch the ball Cobb's not even playing Lazard's dropping passes I mean I, I, Michael I, I am not some football savant but if you're open and the ball's in your chest catch the ball it has nothing to do with the system um, Robert Sala meets the media before he talks with us. Sure. And he just said he's not considering benching Zach Wilson. Said it's easy to blame the quarterback and offensive coordinator when things aren't going well. Yeah. Who else are you going to blame? Well, yeah, I mean, but this is what I want to ask Robert and remind me if I don't. If anybody else is failing at the rate that he's failing, you'd have no problem replacing him. Now, I get the whole quarterback controversy thing. Aaron Rodgers is supposed to be coming back. Why are we worried about this kid's feelings? You're trying to win games. You're trying to save your season for Aaron Rodgers. Anybody else playing at this level on the football field would be replaced. Let's go to Johnny in Queens. Johnny. Hey, guys. How you doing today? Good. How are you, John? Okay, pretty good. I love the show. You Listen, I just wanted to say, guys, you are dead on point at everything that you guys are saying. I mean, I was watching the game last night with my wife, and even my wife saw when he, when Wilson had 10 yards to run, and he could have scored a first down, instead they went for a field goal. I mean, she's even seeing things that this guy could have done that he's not doing. I mean, how long is it going to take these people to realize he does not have the, the instincts of an NFL quarterback? You can see it. He can't see the guys, and it's exactly what you guys are saying. I mean, the only reason why he's got to be still playing is because somehow he's got juice somewhere. No, I mean, but that's the wrong thing because the juice is being drained out of this team's chance to win. I, I thought that what Joe Buck said yesterday on the show is that, you know, Troy Aikman says a, a lot of college quarterbacks can't read defenses. He's in this guy can't read a defense, doesn't, doesn't know what's happening, doesn't know how to attack certain zones or whatever, or man-to-man -man coverages. He's a, he's a complete neophyte with a good arm. Yeah, and, and maybe that's why, like, late in the game, maybe there's a prevent defense. He can, he can hit an open receiver, especially downfield. Yep. He's gotten better at, at hitting the receivers at close range, which is something he really struggled with, the high percentage passes. But, but most of it is just looking at the line of scrimmage, reading the defense, changing the plays, noticing guys open in that split second. Yeah, he can hit the window, but does he see the window open? It's awful. And that was it. By the way, that's against the bad defense. A defense that can rush the pass. Well, they've got some but, guys that they, get after the quarterback. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's I mean, still. Bosa's amazing. Mac is amazing. But they're, they're, they're like the 30th ranked defense. No, you can, you can score some points on that defense for sure. And, and what, you know, we previewed the game yesterday, and I think we hit it right on the nose. Would the Jets be able to score enough points if the Chargers got 21? The answer is no. No. They just can't. When it was 7 nothing, you cannot. I know you were doing the Nick game at that point, and you were watching like me, Peter. I sure was. You thought the game was over. At 7 nothing, I said, they're not yeah, going to come back. The, they're not the coming problem. back. 14 nothing, I said, they're definitely not coming back. And then they had a couple of moments where you start to believe, and you started seeing them start to believe a little bit. And then it just always gets quelled immediately. A couple of sacks in the red zone. Boom, settle for three. Before you, you got to build some momentum at some point. Show your team you could score. They just are never able to put one foot in front of the other. It's unbelievable. It's so disturbing watching. 
I mean, Garrett Wilson said it best after the game. He said, I, I can't even look at the defense in their eyes. And when does, How could you? How when could does you? that become an issue? Because you know how uh, rooms get fractured. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it before when one unit's doing so well and the other unit's awful. When does the sniping begin? When When is there issues? Uh, it hasn't happened yet. Robert Solid's got to worry about that because there are guys on that defense who are probably like, can you help us out a little bit here? Now, we sort of had a gave the defense a hard time in the offseason. No, the defense is great. About the 85 Bears thing. I'm not saying they're the 85 Bears. But they're great. They were not unreasonable in saying what they said. They're if great. this was with a if they were playing with a real football team, they'd be getting tossed around in Ravens like 2000 Ravens like yep. conversation. Absolutely. That's right. how good they are. The only game in which they gave up a lot of points, that Dallas game, uh, Zach threw three interceptions. They were god awful that day. They didn't give him a chance then either. Robert, this, this team just doesn't give up points. Robert Sala is going to join us uh, in just a couple of moments. But first, Don's going to tell us about who's splashing around in his dirty bath water. Excuse me. Dinner al fresco. All worries forgotten. Broken fridge with food that is rotten. Birthday cake for everyone. This blown fuse is no fun. Getting him to brush is no longer a chore. The sink is overflowing onto the floor. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered parts of appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Sign up today at ahs.com. All right, here we go. It's a big responsibility to be a designer. Dagny Dover is a bag brand based in New York City, founded by three women. We make hyper-functional, performance-driven bags. That's like a mouthful. We're all about getting the most out of life. When you're organized and you have your things together, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can live life intentionally. Oh, <laughs> it's pronounced D Dagny Dover. Dagny means new dawn. It's a new dawn for fashion. With ButcherBox, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. So you can always be prepared and enjoy the important things. Sign up for Butcher Box today. Can a handyman fix my leaky faucet? How much does it cost to have my HVAC checked? How do I know I have a missing radiator? What water pipes are from the same Home questions don't have to keep you up at night. Get peace of mind with Thumbtack. We'll connect you with local pros for any home project, from a small fix to a big remodel. See transparent prices, read verified reviews, and book with just a tap. Thumbtack, the easy way to kick care for your home. We just shipped our millionth monthly coffee subscription box. We're sending custom thank you gifts to everyone on our team who helped us get there. I had to call Eric at Custom Inc. Custom Inc. has been with us from the beginning, and he makes sure that we get everything we need and even reminds us of our own company milestones. This milestone, though, I get to tell him about. He is every bit as excited as we are and knows great quality products we can customize and send for the gifts. Celebrate all your milestones with custom gear. Get started today at customink.com. If something happens to you, life insurance could make a big difference to your family. But if you have health problems, you may think it's hard to get. Colonial Pen has an easy solution. Guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance. It's easy because you don't need a medical exam and there are no health questions. As long as you're between the ages of 50 and 85, in most states you can't be turned down. Options start at $9.95 a month, 35 cents a day. of the year for 2023, World Car of the Year two years in a row. And both now come with a complimentary EV charger and up to $600 installation credit. You know how competitive sibling rivalries can be. What can you get for 10 cents? How about a pocket full of cash to spend on a tropical vacation, sports car, you name it. 
because with jackpots on DraftKings Casino, you could turn 10 cents into tens of thousands, even over a million, on roulette, slots, blackjack, baccarat, and more. Jackpot winnings are at 25 million and counting this year, and the next could hit any second. So score the latest jackpots offer when you get America's number one online casino app. DraftKings Casino, the crown is yours. It's amazing to think that my grandmother started Bigelow Tea right here in New York. And today, we're still a family company. And you have to remember, tea, that's all we do. So every cup counts. That means never compromising. My family won't let that happen. And our extended family, they give their all every single day. And our community, well, they expect that. I want a cup of Bigelow Tea to be a moment just for you. That's what I hope for. Think buying fake products is harmless? Think again. Counterfeits are made in unsafe conditions, potentially using hazardous and even lethal ingredients that could harm you and others. Each year, billions of dollars worth of counterfeit products are sold in the U.S. <sighs> I smell big crime. Think about it. If you don't know where the products came from, how could you know where the money goes? You're smart. Buy smart. Go for real. And the Red Wings tonight at 7.30. Pre-game show right here on 98.7 is at 7. Islanders against the Wild, also at 7.30. And the Devils are out in Colorado. Avalanche against the Devils, that's at 10 p.m. That's game time. Brought to you by Telemore Dew Irish Whiskey. During the big games this season, enjoy a Telemore Dew. The original triple blended, triple distilled, and triple cask matured Irish Whiskey. Remember when it's game time, it's Tully time. Please enjoy responsibly. Uh, we will talk in depth about how Steinbrenner's a Zoom meeting with the media today. Some interesting things, but Don's been saying this somewhat facetiously. It might be true. But I don't think they're going to do anything. I mean, I think they're going to change players. And they'll bring different players in, but the organization as you know it will stay the organization as you know it. Yeah, because all the people who are making the decisions are right. the ones that are running the audit, so it's kind of interesting. All right, it is now time for the Robert Sala Report, brought to you by Slomans and Infinity.com. The head coach of the Jets joins us after the Jet games the next day. So today it's on Tuesday. Coaches Michael, Don, and Peter, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, we're doing fine. Uh, you know, I want to start off with this. I, I watch your defense, Robert, and, and I'm overwhelmed by how good they are. And I actually feel sorry that it's kind of being wasted because the offense cannot score, and still the defense is so stout. Do you can you allow yourself to look at that that way as well? That the defense is being wasted on an offense that can't score. Um, you know, it, it's frustrating because you're you know empathetically from an offensive perspective. You know, there's just so many moving parts and trying to get continuity so we can get better and work together and play together and. Uh, um, it's kind of been like a, uh, 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 I don't know, some, it's, it's been something where we've been searching for for going on three years now, and I feel like it's been the same story for three consecutive years where we just haven't been able to get continuity on that side of the ball. Um, but, yeah, de defensively, it's fun to watch that group. Um, they play hard. They play fast. Um, they make a lot of explosive plays. They keep us in games, and... And to be honest with you, you could argue that that three of our four wins were on their back with, uh, you know, the, with the way the uh, defense has stood on its head and gotten some takeaways. And we had our opportunities yesterday. I think we had about five turnover-worthy plays that we could have taken advantage of. And unfortunately, the ball just didn't bounce our way. But uh, uh, the defense is definitely playing at a very, very high level. We've seen it in the past, Robert, where when one unit is carrying another, that sometimes it could kind of fracture uh, the locker room is that anything you get concerned about or worried about down the road if the way things are going continues no uh 
you know, it's. Um, I think it's natural, and this is where I think it's important for people to understand. I think it's natural for there to be frustration, um, but that doesn't mean that you're not still in in support of your teammates. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think what we do have is an. Un- group of men on that side of the ball and, and really in the locker room just tremendous character and I think our guy and, and I know our guys get it in the sense of it's defense's job is to, to get the ball back to the offense by all means necessary as many times as possible and then the offense's job is to go score and um, and it hasn't been it hasn't been great uh, I get it but I think the defense has so much pride in itself and so much pride in dominating football games and trying to find ways to win the game, put the game on their back and win um, to prove that it's a, uh, one of the elite defenses in this uh, in this league. So uh, I don't worry about it. And if frustration is ever expressed outwardly, um, it would never concern me because I just I, I, I you'd be you kind of be sheltered and hiding under a rock if you didn't think that it was possible for guys to get frustrated you know and and speaking of which coach we talk to you every week and you have a certain tone i i I gotta ask you you sound today like your actual voice quality sort of mirrors the tone that we've heard from jets fans today You, you you sound a little more frustrated and angry than i've heard you in tone over over the course of the season yeah i mean guys you know uh I feel like, you know, if you said, hey, Rob, you're, you know, defensively, you guys are going to hold them to 190 yards of offense and 13 points, would you take it? Well, heck yeah, I'll take it, Um, especially that offense. It's a damn good offense. And, um, you know, to play the way we did, you know, it hasn't been clean all year, but, you know, yesterday just was, it was embarrassing. And And I'll say that it just wasn't good enough. And, uh, um, and you just want to be in a position to put yourself in to where you have a shot in the fourth quarter. And I felt like yesterday was the first time that we really, really didn't do that, aside from the Dallas game, but uh, where it was just a, a full mess. But, um, but yeah, there, obviously there's frustration. At late night, obviously, I didn't get any sleep. But, uh, you know, it's a... Um, you're just trying to find solutions. You know, there's there's problems, and, and our job is to find solutions, and we've been grinding on tape and uh, and trying to find a way to put our guys in the best positions possible, and that's all we can do. Now, Coach, uh, I ask you this with total respect. You come on the show, you don't have to, so I, I hope you don't take this in a bad vein. I, I personally don't think Zach can play at this level for a team that has a defense like this, and you just said a couple of questions ago, our offense has been troubling for three years. Well, I mean, that's the one constant. Why are you guys so dead set on sticking with Zach Wilson when he has not been able to do it? What are you seeing that a neophyte like me is not seeing, Coach? I don't get it. No, that's a fair question. Um, a very fair question. But, you know, I, it's easy. It's easy, you know, the, the, three, the three people who get drilled and losses as the quarterback, the play caller, and the head coach. That's natural territory um it's our job to go back and look at the tape and and to figure out the actual reasons why the all 22 that that says everything that's why i think you see some analysts turn on the tape and and like well geez the kid really didn't play that bad you know and it's uh and you turn on the tape and are there things that zach needed to do better yesterday a hundred percent he knows it we know it everyone knows it but are there areas of the field where we could have been better for him as a play caller sure are there areas on the field where we could have been better as position coaches putting our players in position yes uh could the players have been better from an execution standpoint catching the ball um blocking running the right routes um being more efficient in the run game absolutely so it's if if this was and and sometimes it's very obvious when you turn on the all 22 that the quarterback is just incapable but that it's not the case here you know and uh um you know it's there are there are a hundred, there are so many things that everybody needs to get better at, including the quarterback. Um, and I think that's you know it's it's what you know. I don't know. Hopefully, I'm answering your question, right. but it's it's just it's it's not always as easy as like I said the the, the three heads that get rocked the most in the losses, starting with me. 
um, than the play caller than the quarterback. It's just that's all natural. But things have changed over three years, Robert. You've had different offensive coordinators before uh, the change to Hackett this year, and you've had different weapons around him, and the one constant is Zach, and the one constant is last year he couldn't start over over Mike White. So I, uh, first of all, this, this shouldn't be litigated. Now, I never understood with a 39-year-old quarterback, why a guy who couldn't start last year was the first line of defense if he went down. You've got Trevor Simeon uh, in your building. Why Why not give him a try? No, I got you. No, it's, uh, again, a fair question. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, like I said, he, he, I don't know. You got me. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plead the fifth on all this one in terms of just uh, – I've, I kind of explained it, you know, yeah. respectfully, obviously, but mm-hmm. but it's a va- they're valid questions. But and I know, and I know from the, from a passionate fan, from from fans who are passionate, all having the same questions, I respect it greatly, um, you know. But it's I, I've got to look at it from a global standpoint and uh, and just see where we are and uh, and look at the all twenty two the best I can and and make the decisions best as possible. So, so and listen, you did it last year. You went to Mike White when you felt that things could have been better so is it just a case of he's still our best option that it, that nothing would change if Boyle or Simeon were in that situation um well I don't I, I, uh hypothetical that's more hypothetical but right. I, I will say this last year last year's decision uh with respect to last year's decision came because of a a, a loss in confidence that I don't think I'd ever seen in a quarterback before uh things that people didn't see even though you saw it on the on the football field on game day, it was even it was it was even more uh, it was even louder off the field with regard to uh, practices and meetings and all that. And so it was more uh, uh, an effort to try to save him and his confidence because I felt like every time we put him out there, it was just going to get worse. Um, this year, I think is much different, and I think the, the support he has for his teammates is much different because I think they see the work and the growth that he's had over the last year. Um, I think they see the practice habits, the film habits, and I think they see on tape, I think they're all recognizing that it's all not just him. I think that's why the noise is different in the building. You know, I think last year it was very clear, like everyone was like, holy cow, where this year it's like you're not hearing as much noise. It's the most of the noise is coming from the fans, and which is which is earned, it's respected, it, it, which comes with great respect. Um, but but from a internal standpoint, when you when you look at Zach and the way he's grown and and the things that he's doing, he does give us our, the best option to win. And uh, um, and you know you you wish that we could find some more success, some more continuity. Uh, all the different O line changes are are that is not easy to deal with. Um, the changes we've had at receiver, it's like uh, it's. It hasn't been it hasn't been an easy road, and uh, and like I said, I know I, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, and I've I've been on repeat in terms of us trying to get better and finding ways, and and still here we are, just not playing very well on offense, but uh, but you know this is where we are, and we've got to continue to find ways to put these guys in the best position possible to execute to the best of their ability. What do you say, Coach? We're talking Robert Sala, the New York Jets here on the K Show. What do you say to a Hall of Famer, Troy Aikman, who said this is a great defense but a bad team? Um, fair, you know, he's uh, it, did, it did not look good yesterday, and um, I don't know if we're. I don't think we're a bad team. Obviously, a bad team doesn't find ways to win. Uh, to beat Philadelphia, it doesn't find ways to beat Buffalo. It doesn't find a way to find ways to go on the road and beat a Denver team, and uh, you know, and, and go to the wire against Kansas City and. Um, you know, so I, I don't think bad teams figure out ways to win tough football games. But, but with that said, um, what we displayed yesterday was not good enough by any was by any sense of the imagination. And uh, and so he's entitled to that opinion. He's a Hall of Famer who's seen a lot of football. But then uh, it's our job to 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 go out and prove that we're not a bad team. You're a good man for taking the questions, and we appreciate it. Thank you, and I hope you meant, I know that it's not meant with disrespect, but it's questions we wanted to ask. No, credit to you guys. You guys had me on the ringer there, man. It was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> good luck this weekend, man. Talk to you next week. All right. That is uh, Robert Sala. Yeah, you, you know what? He seemed like, honestly, he stumbled a little bit. You know, why is Simeon not playing? It's uh, here's. I'll give you my thoughts when we come back. Okay. I know we're up against it, but I, I read into something that made me back off, 
and I'll explain why. Okay. But first, Peter's going to tell you all about FanDuel. You don't know what... You're finally mastering Grandma's 12-hour sauce. Your stovetop gave out in the 11th hour. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems. Protect what you don't expect. Visit AHS.com and get a free quote today. These jeans are a woman size 34. That was a wake-up call for me. I'm 42, but my body felt like it was 90 years old. Found paired me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. I'm down 78 pounds because of Found. And I'm just getting started. And because of found, I have more confidence in myself. I'm actually in photos with my family. I'm getting my steps in each day. Found has changed my life. Go to joinfound.com to see if the program's right for you. All right, here we go. It's a big responsibility to be a designer. Dagny Dover is a bag brand based in New York City, founded by three women. We make hyper-functional, performance-driven bags. That's like a mouthful. We're all about getting the most out of life. When you're organized and you have your things together, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can live life intentionally. Oh, <laughs> it's pronounced D Dagny Dover. Dagny means new dawn. It's a new dawn for fashion. Life insurance with our family history. Don't you know about Colonial Pen? That's right. Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. We guarantee acceptance to everyone age 50 to 85. No health questions, no medical exam. Applying is easy. And you have your choice of options starting at $9.95 a month, a few dollars a week, 35 cents a day. And your price will never go up. A lifetime rate lock guarantees it. Visit colonialpen.com for free information and a free gift. We just shipped our millionth monthly coffee subscription box. We're sending custom thank you gifts to everyone on our team who helped us get there. I had to call Eric at Custom Inc. Custom Inc. has been with us from the beginning, and he makes sure that we get everything we need and even reminds us of our own company milestones. This milestone, though, I get to tell him about. He is every bit as excited as we are and knows great quality products we can customize and send for the gifts. Celebrate all your milestones with custom gear. Get started today at customink.com. They have phones. I'm going to save money however I can. Why wouldn't I choose a plan where I get the same great service? And Consumer Cellular is a great way to do that. I could hardly believe that my bill was so small. There's no hidden fees or any of those other things you have to deal with. I just get a bill at the end of the month. It's on auto pay and it's super easy. With Consumer Cellular, get the exact same coverage as the leading carriers for up to half the cost. Call 800-393-1745 or visit ConsumerCellular.com to switch today. Uh, he has to look at it more uh, of a global view, which means he just can't make a decision to, to pull Zach Wilson because it has other ramifications. Uh, he also says he sees stuff on the All-22. Now, any coach could say that to us. We don't have access to the All-22, and if we did, would we know exactly what we're looking at? From, from a, an untrained expert eye, to look at him on the field, he's not making decisions quickly. He's not going through his progressions quickly. He's not making throws. He holds on to the ball too long. He's indecisive, and they don't win with him. Besides that, though. Because this is a team that last year you decided to go with two journeymen over him. Right. You, 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 you had Mike White, and you had Strebler. Mike Bleep and White to you. And you, you benched him. Now, he said he, there's a different vibe in the room. I don't care what the vibe is. I think he has – one thing that, that Zach has done, he's rehabilitated the way people think about him because he's well, taking all the blame. For now, but even that can wear. That's why I asked the question about the, the locker room getting divided because eventually these, these guys on the defensive side of the ball are going to be like, what am I killing myself for here? I could be competing for a championship, and we're not getting it done. Can there be anybody else that can play this position? And the thing that I found in his answers when getting about the court, we've never seen him at a loss for words, Michael. This is a guy that just came out of a press conference. Right. And he, he was legitimately stammering 
in defense of his quarterback, and yet he's still the quarterback. When last year, whether it was confidence, whether he lost the room, whatever, you had no problem pulling the plug. Why not now? The only thing I can think of, Michael, is that was a man trying to answer a question that is for somebody else. I feel like somebody is telling him you've got to leave Wilson in. I don't know if it's Woody. I don't know if it's Joe Douglas. But he looks like the kind of guy. His ass is on the line because he'll lose his job before Joe Douglas does. Yeah. He's Great not in point. any kind of position to bench somebody if the rest of the organization is against it. I believe in his heart he would make the change in a second. I don't believe he's allowed to. I haven't heard that from anybody. I just get a sense from, from hearing him and seeing how he's handled it in the past, Michael, with his job on the line. It's a great take. It feels like it's not his call. Because otherwise, it could, it why, could, would he not, why would he stick with it otherwise? But it, it could also be this. I think there's something to what Don says. Because when he said, I have to look at it globally, I think it could come down to as simple as this. That's all he has. I don't think he but, believes in Simeon. He doesn't believe in Boyle. He thinks that Zach Wilson but, but gives him the best chance. Mike White? I mean, look at, well, Mike, Mike, White, but look but at Mike White's resume but, but, before he all of a sudden became this thing. But they did see something in Mike White. And look, Mike White got a decent contract to sign with the Dolphins. So people but, do see something in him. But I think Simeon's Zach, done more. I, I, I get it, but I just, I also think that this is this is this this is his last chance and, until Rodgers comes back. This is what he. I think he truly believes this is what he has. But, but why is that? It's not like they didn't have a chance to go out and get somebody better, right? And we're talking about a quarterback: Denver, Chicago, and New Orleans. And he, he got he threw one pass so far. Uh, this year with the Jets. So this is a guy that with, with a career 58.9 completion percentage. He has thrown 42 touchdowns, 28 interceptions. He's thrown for over 7,000 yards in 35 appearances in 30 games. Not a great quarterback. He's a he's a backup quarterback. But he's only 31 years old. He, he's proved to you that he can function on an NFL level throw touchdown passes, throw more touchdown passes than interception, completely nearly 60% of his passes. You went out and signed him. You're not even you're not even dressing him. Right. I, I, and why I, Boyle? Because Boyle was in Green Bay with with um with Hackett? Yeah. So what did what did you say? Simeon, old Simeon was, wasn't he in Denver with Hackett? Right. He was in Denver Back in 15, 16, Wilson. and 17. Yeah. So so but so you No, so, that wasn't with Hackett then. But but at, but at this point, at this point that's right, and Simeon didn't throw a pass this year. He had been with the Jets back in 2019 right. and actually got a start, if you remember, lost the game. But how do you not give it a try when you've got an offense that literally cannot score touchdowns? So wouldn't you at least activate Simeon? Because the other thing that's going to happen, too, is that when's your whistle's going to get hurt. He's running for his life. I, I, I think you bring up a good point, too. Just just being around the inside of a sports team for 37 years, there are things that they have to make decisions on that never are made public, and they have to wear it. They have to own it. That's their job oh, yeah. to be the out-front guy. Like, I, I don't know if Woody's saying you have to fly. I, I don't know if that's that. But if that's the case, Robert oh. Sala has to wear it. That's part of the rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. That happens in all organizations, and there's so much they can tell you, and there's so much that they can make an excuse. Otherwise, they just have to oh. wear it. And I think Robert Sala is wearing the fact that they came into this season without a legitimate backup well, quarterback. You become the scapegoat for yeah. people that don't want to go public with their decisions, and you've got to fall on that sword. And it's just a, it's a shame because i got to believe he wants to win, Michael. And, I, and I'm not saying that Trevor Simeon is going to do anything. Otherwise, he wouldn't be a career backup quarterback. Be, to, can you tell me it could be worse? If he knows the system, you've signed him. You're not even activating him. Almost to the point where are you afraid that if you activate him, then the fans will feel like he needs to play if he's sitting there in a uniform? Because nobody's going to call for Boyle. Nobody's ever seen him play. And if Wilson were to get hurt, are you afraid Simeon's going to go out there and do better? And then you're going to have to keep Simeon in there? and aggravate somebody within the organization who desperately wants Wilson to play? It's, I, I just, we've gotten to know him over the last three years, Michael, and it, I, I just never saw him in that kind of position. Peter was was quick to notice how depressed he sounded. 
He really did sound it right. You but can hear it right to in his come voice. off a press conference, and I don't want to say we had him with a got you moment because all you were asking about the offense, he was trying to defend the indefensible. Right, which is his job. And he ended up getting there because ultimately he's going to be the starting quarterback next week in Vegas on Sunday Night Football, by the way. Wait, Get they, ready for a prime time triple header that is going to, you're, you're going to want to pull your pants down. <laughs> All right? Wait, wait, wait. Why would you, you pull your pants wait, down? Well, well, from Michael's standpoint, in the nude. These are in the nude prime no, time games. No, these are not exciting no, games. No, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being that guy. Oh. You ruin the, uh, the sarcasm, Michael. I'm sorry. Come on, because it speaks for itself. Panthers at Bears on Thursday. Nudity. Al, running my, around Al, shrieking. I, I heard Al's going to stay in L.A. and do it off the team. I, I, I think this is this might be the game where we officially lose out. You, <laughs> now, not, not you, on now, you service, mean he doesn't like show the, up, or he no, he's no, going to do it off the screen. He he at some point in the game, he's going to be like, you know, I called the miracle on ice. I, I I can't even count the Super Bowls. I'm I'm in Chicago calling Bears Panthers. Wouldn't, wouldn't you love if he did that? And they said, Al, we we, spe- we pay you a million dollars a game, and he goes, I'm good. Keep it. I'm good. Yeah, I'll get you next Keep week. Keep it. You take a check. Keep it. All right. Then your Sunday night game, Jets Raiders. But this way, right. like, anytime you could see Mark Davis on TV, it's anytime you see yeah, Mark throw Davis, the yeah. I'm sure you know the, the, the touchdowns galore there. And then your uh, your your Monday night game is, is is Broncos Bills. Bills are broken. Broncos have been broke for a while. So that's your and we and we flex. This would be Peter. This would be oh I know the group of primetime games where some executive in the NFL would be like, can we flex out of games? Can we come up with something called flex? No, no, we, we have that. That's actually an option we already have. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> and, and, and Anthony made a good point. You need you need 14 days to flex out of Thursday. We didn't know two weeks ago the Bears Panthers was going to be a dumpster fire. We look two months ago, but I think you have to have every team. So the Panthers no, have to go. The Bears at some had point. a prime time game already. They when they beat yeah, but the, the Commanders. But the Panthers have to be in. So you know even what? If you want to flex, you know, pay them pay them a fee, right? <laughs> the Panthers. Whatever. Sorry, you didn't get to play on prime time. Here's a million dollars. And you know, yesterday I, when I was tweeting about how bad the Jets and Giants offenses were, which Don, thank you for mwah, the perfect stat to back up every word that I said. Thank you. Someone thought of, of course, it's me like taking some shot and goes, "Oh yeah, you know, like the Commanders' offense is is just running." This year, it's apples and 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 and, and no, screwdrivers. I watch it's, every it's week. It's the greatest show on turf. It's in the Washington. greatest. I'm watching. <laughs> I am watching uh, uh, Randall Cunningham throw the ball to Chris Carter and Randy Moss every week. Oh, yeah. Compared to New York football, they cannot move the ball down the field. It's been that. You know, it's weird. Even it's with, not just this it's, year. It's been that for uh, even during the regular season. Eli didn't. I mean, Eli is is unbelievable compared to what we've seen of late, but. You know, Bill, Bill Parcells used to call it East Coast football. We don't have high-powered offenses here, ever. But in the last no. couple years, because I don't want to disrespect Eli. The, and by the way, both wearing the three-quarter zip as, course, as you're wearing today. You know, this isn't a three-quarter zip. This is a sweater. Mine's a sweater. No, but it's still. But there's, it, there's a different look to a three-quarter zip. This is a sweater. Wow. Oh, oh, because yours has the like uh, ruffle. The, the, yeah, the, yeah, okay, yeah. Got it, got it. So yeah, I didn't realize they literally wear it every time. Every time. It's a man. It's a, it's a man. But you, you realize that I just got these, and now I have to throw them in the garbage. Why? Why? Because, honestly, to say you dress like Eli and Peyton Manning is not a compliment. There are a lot of things, okay? A lot of things. Almost all good. They're exceptional at everything they do. Right. They've it's, never been accused of being fashionable. Right, because like, right, you're not going to look at Peter and go, Peter, you look like you can you can host the CMAs this week. Right. You don't want to be. That's not, not a compliment look, that's to you. Thing. You know, so, like, there's so many things you would like to do like that, but not that. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. Thank you. I was, you were I, watching that Manning cast, and you saw the three-quarter zip. No, yeah, but why did I get there? I had another thought wow. before. I just looked at your we three-quarter about, zip. We were talking about how you said no offense to Eli. You were talking something about oh, oh, Eli. thank you. Thank you very much. So, no, I don't want to be disrespectful to Eli because even though there were certainly plenty of times when they didn't win the Super Bowl because their offense was great, but there was a certain je ne sais quoi, an explosiveness that existed. Guys, how far away are we? From the Victor Cruz 99-yard touchdown, I mean, there were moments of offensive excitement on those teams. Now, I mean, I'll say this. The the Rex Ryan, Mark Sanchez Jets were really nothing offensive to be excited about. 
So I, I guess there's a closer relationship there in that they had a great defense and all Mark Sanchez was a, was a game manager with a good running game. But it still didn't but feel it, like this. But it's just so frustrating because both Jets and Giant fans have felt this forever. Maybe a little bit with Odell. The Giants got a bit of a reprieve because they were explosive for that little bit of time. But you mean healthy. the general feeling but the of... The general feeling of I'm watching other football and it's like another sport. It just seems so easy to get points. And then watching the Jets and Giants the last few years, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to get a first down. God, it's just so frustrating. It really is. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Jose in Brooklyn. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Shout out to the company. And I want to up? thank you guys for, um, for signing my order, uh, for autographing my shirt at the Nick Opener. Um, to get to my point about the game, it, it, it was very disheartening because, like you guys said, at 7 nothing, I already knew that the game was already over at that point, and it was because they only scored six points after that. And the issue with it is when you have – a uh, quarterback that is this and that, sadly, in situations, the team can't make mistakes, and they made a lot of mistakes, and that's what led to the differential in the scoreboard. And I do hope, and hearing Rob, Rob Sala today, like, wow, that was very, very alarming, but it's not something I'm surprised because I, I'm a person that kind of wasn't a, a believer in the Zach Wilson stock draft stock so this is something that i that it, it, it's kind of sad to pretty much live this long extended prolonged misery so well, thank I, you, I guys did, you, got, you got it i just i, I want to like this guy uh, it, it's funny i'm watching the game yesterday and jody's sitting there and she looks up at the screen and he's got his helmet off she goes how old is that guy he looks like he's 11 and he has not performed up to the level of an nfl quarterback certainly not the level of a number two overall pick it's, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. It's just think of the quarterback situation in New York. It's a mess. And remember, this isn't North Dakota. No, it's New York. Let's go to Bob in New Milford. Bob. What's up, guys? Great hey, Bob. Show. Thanks. Thank you. Die hard Jet fan for most of all my life in misery. But I'm on the fence with everything being said. I agree with Rob Asala said. What got me on the show here, just saying that it was probably a miracle in disguise that Aaron Rodgers got hurt the first night with this offensive line. But we're four and four with this offensive line and with Zach Wilson. If if Aaron Rodgers was playing, would have we not won the New England game and even possibly the uh, Kansas City game? We now be six and two. Right. We probably would won last night with Aaron Rodgers with all of what I saw with the offensive line. Hmm. But sure. on, on the other side of the fence, I'm still saying it's the Jets. We always have issues. We always have problems. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, I, 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 I don't know you. where that was good. Thank you. Yeah, they have big problems, except on the defensive side of the ball. And their, their special teams, well, barring yesterday, but, is very good. But and everyone jumped us when we suggested it. But there were some smoke and mirrors with that three-game winning streak. Got some huge breaks. You really should not have won the Giant game. That was on the Giants. Sorry. Good, good job by the Jets. They won the game. Nobody's taking it away from you. But in the final analysis of that three-game winning streak, you could have lost them all. I, you caught a couple of breaks. Good on you. The Denver game, you were sloppy, but you found a way to win because you're a better team than the Broncos. The Eagle game, great job. But if the Eagles, if, 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 if Hurts doesn't throw that pick and they decide to run the football, you may never get the ball back and lose that game. And then the Giant game, if the Giants had a quarterback with a clue, no offense to DeVito, it's a great story, but he's not an NFL quarterback, you lose that game. So now it came to roost, right? We could say all the things, Chargers are poorly coached, they don't have a great defense, they never win a big game. They're, they're a pretty good football team, and they didn't make any mistakes, and they won the game. And that's how it's probably going to go the rest of the way. You catch some breaks, you win, but ultimately, how good are you? Can you say no offense after you say quarterback with a clue, and it's implied that DeVito does not have a clue? Well, well I, was, I mean, I was in, I'm in the moment, okay? It's a get-out-of-jail-free card for everybody. But, 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 no, I'm, no, no, I'm being yeah. honest, because I, I think it's a great story. 
Cedar Grove, New Jersey. He's playing in the NFL. No, you love He's it. thrown a touchdown pass. He's run for a touchdown. It's cool. All right? So I got a little crazy. My talk showness came out. But he's not an NFL quarterback, Peter. He's not. Well, he's not. A, he's certainly not a starter. He's, oh, 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 he was on the practice squad. Yeah, he, he, he's probably not a backup. Either. So, but 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 it's a great story. Good on him. But are the Giants going to win a game the rest of the year with him at quarterback? I'm, I'm, I'm scared to well, say. Well, the anything. schedule is easy enough. Um, time for inside the numbers. Brought to you by Eisner Amper. Don gave you some of these a little earlier. The Jets are the only NFL team in the Super Bowl era to have their defense collect five or more sacks hold the opponents to under 200 yards, and not allow any 25 or more yard plays, and yet lose the game by 20 points. That's Inside the Numbers, brought to you by Eisner Amper, a leading business advisory firm, helping clients transform their companies, build capital, innovate processes, and mitigate risk. Make Eisner Amper part of your solution. Learn more at eisneramper.com slash solution. Peter actually legitimately made me feel bad. No, wait, wait, you shouldn't. I feel uh, bad. Because he probably has family listening. Yeah, you're and I said get a clue. I am. I, I, I'm a shock, jock, yo-yo, just I need hits so I can be relevant blank bag. I, I've, Don, heard, I'm, I'm, I've, I've heard that I've heard that can really be successful, just I, saying horrible things. I was caught up in the moment when I was trying to accentuate the point. We don't have that there's not a quarterback. The Jets should not have won that game. And yes. it came at the expense of Tommy DeVito and his family. Well, somebody's probably in the Willowbrook in the parking lot of the Willowbrook Mall listening because they heard their their son or their their grandson or their cousin or their friend's name and said, "Oh, I wonder what Don has to say about Tommy DeVito." And I said, "With without a clue," and I feel terrible about it. It's, it's okay. I, I want to go to the radio penalty box. No, you shouldn't. Because uh, because it doesn't change the point. Maybe you said it in a way that wasn't altogether nice. That's right. But I would I would look right at Mr. and Mrs. Devito and say you should be immensely proud of this kid. He's gotten to a level that's unbelievable. Yeah. He'll have this the rest of his life. Who knows how long this run will go? Maybe he'll find a way to get some more big checks. But I I have to tell you, I do not think it's a good thing if he's the starting quarterback of the New York Giants right now. Maybe but, another, right. but I mean, time. Uh, that's kind of our listening audience. Like you know, the the Volpe's listen to the show all the sure. time. Sure, right? Uh, you got to know there's a family behind. It. That's why. That's why for 22 years I've never called for somebody to be fired. Well, that's there's silly. a family. So wait, so every time we talk about someone, we have to think about their family, especially ones that live well, but, in New York. <laughs> no, but I don't mind. Yeah, but I don't mind criticizing players, and they deserve to be criticized. But I just, I think just Tommy DeVito, it, it's. It, it, it is what it is, right? No, I mean, that is this is, is the a great good story. story. Everyone knows that, that that's the story. And he's being put in this situation because the Giants thought that it was a good idea to have their third string quarterback be a guy that really is shouldn't be in the league. And now they're stuck because apparently the Giants' offense is so intricate that Einstein couldn't figure it out. That Barkley can't play for like a, a million weeks until he can understand the offense. But, Yet, but Joshua Dobbs can go out there basically with a piece of paper no, with, like, they, with they, Chinese written on it you and run out there and, and, and run and score and, and win. By and the way, I don't know this. Dobbs, fluent in Mandarin. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Um, but if you listen to the audio we played during the NFL yesterday, yesterday, mm -hmm. Dobbs talked about how basically he didn't know the offense and... O'Connell and the coaching staff in his ear were basically telling him what to look for in every play, walking him through where they basically would describe what the what the playbook would look right. like before the play. So I, Dable can't do that because he's busy screaming at somebody on the sideline. Oh, now you're taking shots at Dable, oh, too. I, <laughs> it doesn't a, end with you. He's a, he's a screamer. He's a sideline screamer, but that's all right. I'm, I'd be Goodness, frustrated. He's well. really becoming that guy. Well, you, you mean going... No, listen. He's, Don is just fine. And from what I've heard... The meaner you are, even to people who are legendary and don't deserve anything because they've been nothing but a, a, a member of your team, even if you treat that person like filth, people eat it up. They love it. So we're doing it wrong. Are you alluding to something I'm not aware of? No. No, you're aware. You're aware. You're very aware of it. Sure. It's called treating New York legends like filth for no reason. You haven't heard of that? No. By the way, I, did, I, I was I, I did an no. appearance. I did an appearance on the uh, Dan Levitard show. Did you really? I did. This topic actually came up. You, we, do you ever? Are you? Is any part of your life not on a mic? I mean, when you and Natalie are making mad, passionate love, do you have a mic? I think they um, they live stream. 
Yeah, that's all. That's Only all. fans? That's all. I like that number, please. Yeah, that's, a, you want, that's what you want to see? Wait, Not you. If I could blur you out. Wait, you, you thought that was going to make it better? What you just did? And by the way. What, like, that's the issue. And, it, I, and I like that he said I want the number. Like, it's a phone number. Like, it's 9766. Well, I, oh, you yeah. know what? I don't I have want only fan accounts. I don't know. Well, but you, either way, you don't dial a phone. You thought it was a dial-in? Yeah, you got to get your rotary <laughs> phone. And then you dial up 1-800-ONLY-FANS. No, but on, on we just... Uh, we, Dan and I discussed local uh, New York radio, which he's always interested in. But Don, Michael, you want to know the only thing you wanted to talk about? Don. Don the Greg. But why doesn't he call to have me on? Well, I was on. Because was, he can make fun of you to Peter, not No, not I didn't to make, you. He didn't make fun at all. But I was on promoting. I was booked by uh, the company that I do my podcast with promoting the podcast. But when I went on the show, first topic, can we talk about Don LaGreca? They love you. Did you say something nice or did you oh, backstab oh, I, I said, well, I said really nice things about both of you. And I said that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to be in, on a show with people who are really good people. And, I, and then we talked about some other people in this market who do not behave like good people, which Dan and Stugatz had their thoughts on. And I said, how I, you know, honestly, I, I know it's sort of not necessarily to our benefit, ratings-wise, that we're good people. My, and I said, Michael even had a situation this year where he said something out of school, he felt really bad about it, and he immediately profusely apologized. And Stugatz was like, what is he doing? You can't apologize in New York. That's, that's the death well, now. Why, why are you being a good guy and apologizing? I've lasted 22 years being a good guy. And it'll be like 29, 30. I think he was like being that. ironic. But you yeah, get the idea. I get it. Hey, listen, playing fantasy sports is not getting you into shape. No, nope, it's not. Dinner al fresco. All worries forgotten. Broken fridge with food that is rotten. Birthday cake for everyone. This blown fuse is no fun. Getting him to brush is no longer a chore. The sink is overflowing onto the floor. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered parts of appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Sign up today at AHS.com. Everything your restaurant can do with tools from Square. Get a POS that connects to a KDS so you can handle orders ASAP. Reach more customers with online ordering and QR codes. Use pocket-sized hardware so you can turn tables faster. And get one account for everything so you can take care of it all and take it easy, too. Get your all-in-one restaurant system and sign up at Square.com today. You done yet? It's 2 a.m. Why are you still scrolling through videos? You're not paying me overtime here. If you really want to see something new, why not change those shades that have been broken for the past two years? Let's tap the Thumbtack app, and in a matter of seconds, we'll find a pro to install new shades. Okay. With Thumbtack, you can easily find top-rated professionals for every home project. Thumbtack, the easy way to care for your home. Custom Ink helps to celebrate and drive our students' achievements with Custom Gear. They love Custom Ink's different styles and designs. We love how Custom Ink makes the process simple with their easy-to-use design lab, expert artists ready to help, and unbeatable customer service. Custom Ink allows our kids to show everyone their accomplishments and the pride they have in our school. When we place an order, I know they got our back, so we can focus on the kids. Custom Ink has hundreds of products to help you feel connected. Upload your logo or start your design today at customink.com. Welcome to the Athletic Basketball hey, Show. Folks, the league is in absolute chaos. Players going off pretty much every other night. Play and picture that when it clears could leave a few future Hall of Famers. It all down to some rookie taking free throws. Nice The Athletic. Subscribe today.
Tick2 is a Tick2 inhibitor. Tick2 is part of the Jack family. It's not known if the Tick2 has the same risks as Jack inhibitors. Find what plaque psoriasis has been hiding. Ask your dermatologist about the Tick2 for clearer skin. So clearly you. So Tick2. Dive into the world of win reality. Get ready to get to your next level fast. Experience unlimited at-bats, training that simulates all game situations, and head-to-head -head action with friends. Master your timing, pitch recognition, and hitting mechanics with expert coaching. Let's see the progress. So when your moment comes, you'll be ready. Win reality. Baseball uncaged. <laughs> Chris Sheeran back here for the Michael K Show. The Brooklyn Nets have been playing elite teams at an elite level to start this season. However, they're just coming up short against them, losing tight games to the Cavaliers, Mavericks, Celtics, and Bucks by a combined 20 points or five points per game. One bright spot early on has been the play of Cam Thomas, who has taken a leap in his development. He has four 30-plus point games so far. That leads the league. Plus, he dropped 45 last night, which is tied for fourth best in the NBA this season with another New York baller, Jalen Brunson of the Knicks. Zach Levine of the Bulls is the leader in the clubhouse so far this season. He's got a 51-point game. What does Thomas have in store for an encore tomorrow night? Can the Nets bounce back and stop their brief two-game skid? You'll have to tune in and find out when Brooklyn hosts James Harden and the Los Angeles Clippers. Our coverage begins with the pregame show at 6.30, followed by opening tip a little after 7.30, right here on Yes, and streaming, of course, on the Yes app. Stein, we're to spoke with the media. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. And Brian Cashman is um, is going to talk. I'm told it's six o'clock. So Peter will um, completely eradicate all of ENN and run. Cash. Yeah, you know me. I, I only care. You love baseball. Oh, I love well, not six. Let's talk it's not just baseball. I Come love on, talking about baseball in the off season. Right. With the Yankees brass, who's going to tell us basically nothing. I'm sorry. Let's just be honest. You don't have to carry the Brian Cashman stuff. I, well, I, just, I, we'll I, monitor it. The ENN staff will monitor it. Yeah, if anything gets said that's remotely interesting, please and, let me know. And by the end of ENN, I mean, can we be frank here? Sure. That's one answer for Brian. Yeah, but... <laughs> Am I right? Great, no, maybe two. No. It's two. It's two questions. Oh, oh no, no. Anthony's hearing it's five now. Oh, oh, see? oh five oh, o'clock hour. We yeah. run the whole thing. There we go. The Jets called the Yankees and said, You sure you want to do six? <laughs> <laughs> sure you don't want to do five? Maybe four? Let's uh, let's go back to the calls, shall we? Shall we do that? And by the way, another outstanding performance by Don LeGrec at the microphone. And the Knicks beat the Clippers 111-97. Clippers, um, did they did they have their um, AARP calls yeah, with it, them? Yeah, it's, it's true. They, they, They're old. They, uh, did you notice that their... Um, their ad on their jersey is about a reverse mortgage. Oh, I didn't know that. Tom that, yeah. Selleck was actually one of the coaches. Of the day. It was. It's so. It's so interesting. Like Harden played like a majority of the game, and he looked fine. But they just Peter. They looked old. And well, you know, Harden yeah. said after the game, "Hey, listen, it's still very early, and I'm sure they're going to be a good team, and they're going to make the playoffs, and they'll win a couple of rounds." But I, listen, it's only one game. I didn't see a team. That's anywhere close to a championship, but boy, what I saw is the Knicks are a completely different team with a healthy R.J. Barrett, and when they've got Randall going, because he finally was hitting shots. And listen, it's still the Randall handle; it still tries to do too much sometimes. But when you get an engaged Randall Brunson and R.J. Barrett, that's a different team. And 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 the other thing too, Michael, they've got a bench now. Divincenzo's a nice player oh, they have a good coming bench. off the bench. They have, they, a, they have a guy. Hey, 
Evan Fournier, who can't get off the Diggins. bench. He's a really good three-point shooter, which is one of their weaknesses. Michael, they took over that game early in the fourth quarter with their second unit. Mm -hmm. And it was almost a mistake, I thought, and uh, Monica brought it up during the broadcast, too. Monica McNutt, McNutt who is tremendous, by the way, that um, the, the, Thibodeau maybe made a mistake putting the starters back in. Because then the Clippers started to creep back into it. They're, they're, Knicks are a good team. They're not a championship team either. But they're, when when they get those guys going, they're, they're as deep as I remember. And they're a very, very good basketball team. And let's give a little love to R.J. Barrett, who we, we criticize quite a bit. Deserve it sometimes, most of the time. He had 26 points, and 9 of 16 shooting. He had missed two games with bad knee. He's the youngest Nick now to ever reach 5,000 points. Well, and for the record, how do you ever, we give him a hard time? I mean, well, we, we're, because we're he's critical. the third pick in the draft, and we yeah, which is unfair. We're, 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 we're critical uh, of RJ, but I think we also think he's a very good player. Yeah. But he's this 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 year, so far, what are we five in or six, seven in, three and four now, right? Seven. Former Raven. Yeah, current Raven. Uh, seven games in, though, it does kind of feel like he may be taking a little bit of a step forward this year. Let's go to uh, line one doesn't have a name. It doesn't have an address. It wait doesn't a minute, have wait, any probably way. means doesn't want you to answer it. Yeah. What is it? Do you not want me to take that in? <laughs> it's my guess. Well, why is it up there? Well, why, why is he there? I'm confused. What the F? Yeah, Robert, I don't know what's going on. Oh, 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 here it is. It's Raph in Manhattan. Hello, Raph. <laughs> Hey guys, that was uh, pretty funny. That was a, that was as heavy a lifting as he's ever had to do to introduce a call. You should be proud. <laughs> I am. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, you know, after listening to Robert Sala, I'm truly convinced now. I've been feeling this way for about a year and a half, season and a half now. But I'm truly convinced this has nothing to do with Sala, nothing to do with Joe Douglas nor Hackett. This has everything to do with Woody. I don't know what relationship he has with Zach and his family, but those three guys, no winning football. They've coached or been involved with winning teams. You're telling me they don't know what a good or bad quarterback looks like? Robert Sala looked exasperated. Or I should say sounded exasperated. He couldn't find anything else to say or any excuses. This has nothing to do with them. And I want Jets fans to think about it. This has nothing to do with them. Yeah, nothing I mean, that, that, I, I've heard that theory floated, Raph, but unless you're sure, it's really hard to pin that. I mean, people try to connect the dots that Woody knows the family, the owner of JetBlue, whatever the case may be. Doesn't Woody want to win? I mean, it, we're not running a boys club here. He wants I, to win. I Isn't know, it better to win with a quarterback is, that's a, a viable option? This guy's not a viable so what quarterback is it right now. I mean, but but, but Raf is right. I, uh, Robert Sala wants to win. Woody Johnson's not going to get fired. He's got 100% job security. He owns the team. And I think Joe Douglas has done enough, and his connection with, um, with Aaron Rodgers keeps him employed. But Robert Sala, if anybody gets fired, he's going to be the first to go. You know, uh, this whole thing that um, that Aaron Rodgers loves Robert Sala, that, that's going to go away if the team just continues to lose and, and is dysfunctional. I'm sure he wants to win, Michael, and giving the team the best chance to win. Can he really honestly say that Zach Wilson gives him the best chance? And if so, and if not, then why didn't they go out and get somebody better than the guys that they have? All you did was get somebody that just happens to know the Daniel Hackett but, but, system but, but, in Newman Green Bay and, and Trevor Simeon, who you don't even dress. So... Why wouldn't you go out but and get if, a quarterback? But if, if he was that in love with uh, with Zach Wilson, would he have allowed them to go get Aaron Rodgers? Well, then? I mean, that's two different things. I mean, uh, you could be in love with somebody, but if you got a chance to win an well, immediate it, Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers, that's my exact point, though. So why is he still? Why is he the backup quarterback? He could have been the third string quarterback, still kept on the team, learned under Rodgers. Instead, I don't. you have a guy who who got benched twice last year. Let's go to Hammer in Bergenfield. What's up, Hammer? Hey, what's going on, guys? It's been a very, very long time. I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for paving the way for me. Uh, I've been covering the Raiders on YouTube for the last three years. We just hit 7,000 subscribers. Oh, nice. And I actually had the, had the opportunity to have one of your old colleagues on last Thursday for the Giants-Raiders uh, matchup preview in Bill Daughtry, and it was a phenomenal show. Oh, cool. And we actually took, we took a page out of your book this past weekend as we did a, a live watch party at Bar A. It was phenomenal. Good for you, I wanted man. to talk to you. 
John, I wanted to talk to you in regards to this upcoming matchup. As you know, we just beat you guys this past Sunday. The game last night between the Chargers and the Jets. Do you think the Raiders might be coming down to earth this coming Sunday night against the Jets? Or do you think it's going to be another game where you're going to see more more of a different offense and more of a different defense than we than we had previously under the Josh McDaniels uh, regime? So the question is, is was that just a one-off with Pierce taking over and they were all pumped up and now they're going to come crashing down like a Jeff Saturday situation with Indianapolis last year. I, I, I lean towards it probably being that. I don't. You guys are right. Antonio Pierce wants to be a head coach. No, I get it, but I'm saying the way they played. Right. Was that just rallying around Pierce like a like a one like hey let's let's win here well, also, after the all Gi the dysfunction early? And, and, and the Giants and are the bad. Jets are bad. Like I I don't I don't know if what you saw out of the Raiders is what you're going to see the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. But I still think they're going to be a handful for the Jets because the Jets don't score. Do we have the line yet, Anthony? That's an interesting line to me. I mean, did the Jets warrant being a favorite against anybody? Well, it was one and a half the Giants were were getting. Right. So the right. Jets are better than the Giants. Right. So I would think the Jets would be favored. But well, maybe slightly, maybe a... Jets, Jets minus, minus one, one and a half. half. So, yeah, it's, that's so... That makes sense. They're a one and a half point favorite. Um, Carson Wentz reportedly signing with the L.A. Rams. Oh, boy. Mm. That's not a great sign. But you can't tell me Carson Wentz is not better than Zach Wilson. No, he's, he's better than Zach Wilson. I can, no, I can tell you affirmatively. He's better than Zach Wilson. And he's terrible. Carson Wentz is not good. But he's better than Zach Wilson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to say it. I honestly... I, I legit... I, I actually want to tell you guys this. Do you know I am rooting more for this Jets team than I've rooted for any New York football team my entire time really? here? Well, that makes sense. Being a Commanders fan, I'm sure you weren't rooting well, for the Giants. I never root for the Giants. No, but this specific team. Right. Like, I, you, I got excited about it, and I want to see Jets fans be happy. For God's sake, Q-Tip and A Tribe Called Quest are celebrating oh. 30 years of Midnight Marauders. In my opinion, one of the greatest records ever made. 30 years old on Thursday. Better okay? than the Partridge Family Christmas album? I believe so. Okay. And rather than Q-Tip think about his amazing contributions to music. He's sending Don and I voice notes talking about yeah. actual nightmares that he, he's having he, after the game. Uh, he had a fever dream last night he after did. the game, and he described it to Peter and I, Michael, and it was disturbing. I don't know if I were in any kind of position to, to Wait, say. Q-tip did? It involved yeah. a horse. He was texting with you guys yesterday? He was texting, and he, sent a, he likes to send voice notes messages on text why he, am i why is he leaving because me he's out? not a fan of yours uh he sent a detailed uh, dream analysis that featured a horse a trident and joe namath this is real he had a fever <laughs> dream that's how bad and, and, and clearly had just woken up when he sent us the message right because that's he's disturbed because you start you're, right you're the same you start to lose it as the no he's got to tell it right yeah. away but that's what that's what's happening to. We to should real be allowed Jetsons. to air. Can you get permission from him so we can air it? Because it's really terrific. I think it'll be considering who it is, how detailed the dream is, and then, how you big know, a fan he is, and then also the same day Thursday, right? The celebration of thirty years of Midnight Marauders. It's also thirty years since the Wu Tang Clan debut. Enter the Wu Tang Thirty Six Chambers. <clears throat> can Method Man even enjoy the week, or is he just too distraught because of this football team? Think I mean, he's got to see the forest through the trees, right? I mean, it's made him a lot of money. It's put them... Listen, I'm sure he'll put things aside and he'll celebrate. How do you think Ralph Macchio's feeling today? Another big I, I worry about Macchio. Yeah. I often do. What Jeff, what Jeff fan do you worry about the most? Adam Sandler? Larry David. No, I don't worry about Larry. No, you, you, you really... Good. Larry doesn't worry. By, oh, the, way, by the way, coming I, back. I checked in with Larry. You and, Really? Uh, yeah, be, uh, because they, they ran the center stage we had, and uh, I'm talking a little bit out of school. He said... I'm in town to promote the, the new season in January. Can I come by the studio? And I got some things to say. I said, well, you could take the show. So we're, so Larry might be back. Larry could be back. Is there going to be another event for us to go to? I don't know. Maybe well, he'll ask you to host this time. No, he doesn't. Because remember, he turned me down to write the forward for the center stage. Program. Right. And so you should say, I'm good. I'm what good. was his answer? Just no? I said, no, I'm, I don't do stuff like that. All right, well, no, that's, that, that's, but that's fine. La but that's, like, la but that's like, Larry. But if he had done a bunch of forwards, then I'd be offended, but... Yeah, that's not his. It's thing. not his thing. But we haven't had him up here in quite a while. He, he's still done Rich Eisen a few times. I mean, you know, we, well, he lives out there. We miss him though. It, it's time to come back. Well, he's he's the one. I didn't say come in. 
I just said, I just want you to know that they're running the center stage. It's still my favorite one. Close second is Mike Tyson. And he said, oh, that's great. He goes, I'm going to be in town in January. Can I come by? I got some things to get up my chest. I said, come get them off your chest. That's, isn't it amazing, though, that your two favorite center stages are two of my all-time guys? We're so alike. La, We're so different. La and Iron Mike? Yeah. Yeah, but season 12 is coming. What, February, right? End of January, beginning of February. I can't wait. And it's still not sure that it's going to be the last one. I love that he leaves the door open instead of lying to us. Right, because he'll, if he feels like doing it, he'll do it. He's liar. Right, there's no reason to say, oh, I'm, I'm done. No, wait, wait and see. Um, we're going to talk about what House Steinbrenner said, and then we have Brian Cashman speaking at about five. Uh, but right now... Don's going to talk about his favorite uh, gambling app. Yay! Right, Ben MGM, the king of sports. Your dinner party was a hit. Your dishwasher took a hit. Your teen is giving laundry a try. Your dryer left you hung out to dry. Date night with the crush. Ah, your toilet won't flush. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Visit AHS.com and get a free quote today. Get tools that bring every angle of your beauty business together. Clients can book online 24-7 for multiple services and multiple staff, so scheduling is simple. And with client notes and stored payments, you can offer seamless checkouts so clients keep coming back. Learn your beauty business with tools that bring everything together. Get started at square.com today. These jeans are a woman size 34. That was a wake-up call for me. I'm 42, but my body felt like it was 90 years old. Found paired me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. I'm down 78 pounds because of Found, and I'm just getting started. And because of Found, I have more confidence in myself. I'm actually in photos with my family. I'm getting my steps in each day. Found has changed my life. Go to joinfound.com just to see if the program's right for you. You done yet? It's 2 a.m. Why are you still scrolling through videos? You're not paying me overtime here. If you really want to see something new, why not change those shades that have been broken for the past two years? Let's tap the Thumbtack app, and in a matter of seconds, we'll find a pro to install new shades. Okay. With Thumbtack, you can easily find top-rated professionals for every home project. Thumbtack, the, the easy way to care for your home. We just shipped our millionth monthly coffee subscription box. We're sending custom thank you gifts to everyone on our team who helped us get there. I had to call Eric at Custom Inc. Custom Inc. has been with us from the beginning, and he makes sure that we get everything we need and even reminds us of our own company milestones. This milestone, though, I get to tell him about. He is every bit as excited as we are and knows great quality products we can customize and send for the gifts. Celebrate all your milestones with custom gear. Get started today at customink.com. Chris Sheeran back here for the Michael K. Show. Yankees managing general partner and co-chairperson Hal Steinbrenner met the media earlier today, and our Jack Curry was in the leadoff spot. I know the season is evolving and the offseason has just begun, but with the questions that you have asked, what kind of roadmap do you think you've laid out to make sure that 2023, in the words of Brian Cashman, doesn't carry over a disaster into 2024? Yeah, look, I, I we had, as you know, three days, pretty hardcore meetings here in Tampa. Um, I did not want to be a part of those meetings because I felt my presence could influence 
people from really voicing everything they wanted to voice. And I, I talked to people before and they agreed with me. But I did speak to him at the beginning and I, I just told him that, you know, this season is completely unacceptable. Um, that, you know, we got a winning record. That's not an accomplishment. That's a requirement as far as I'm concerned. And that everybody needs to check their egos at the door. And in a respectful way, everybody needs to be challenging each other and critical each, of each other and, and what goes on in the, uh, the individual's various worlds. Um, and that if anybody thought that everything in your world is just perfect and you're doing everything right, then you should just leave because you'll be useless to the, to the proceedings. So, you know, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to lay out and make clear that we need to look at everything we're doing and there doesn't need to be any finger pointing behind anybody's back because you're all in the room doing it to each other's faces. And, uh, you know, I'm told the meetings, I've read the notes to the meetings, it's about 40 pages of them, but uh, they were respectful, but they were heated at times and very honest, very frank. And, uh, you know, as the days and weeks ensue here, I think, I think a lot of things are going to come of it. Um, changes, perhaps in personnel, certainly in certain practices. Um, but those discussions are ongoing between the parties that were in the room every day here. And, uh, you know, we're working really hard. I mean, Cash was just down here for two weeks in Tampa. No, there's a guy who gets it. All right, so Hal Steinbrenner spoke today, and uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, Brian Cashman's going to speak. So, listen, I'm always forthright and try to be honest with the audience. I like Hal Steinbrenner. I, I think that a lot of the um, vitriol that's directed toward him, I understand people aren't happy. They had a terrible season, and Hal even said that. 82 and 80 for a team with a $280 million payroll, it's unacceptable. It's embarrassing. Um, but people say, oh, he doesn't care. He does care. Oh, he doesn't even watch the games. He watches every game, every inning of every game, whether he's in New York or he's in Tampa. He does care. He spends an awful lot of money on the team. Does he spend as much as the Mets? He didn't last year. But to say he doesn't care, you're ill-informed, you don't know. So he spoke today. Now, this is a guy who said on our show when he was on, the last time he was on, that if the, if, if the season continues to go this way and we don't make the playoffs, there are going to be big changes. It doesn't seem like there's going to be any big changes. Nope. Um, it was interesting. The... Uh, the analytics audit, which he said is not really an audit, is going to take a year. So anything that comes of that is not going to happen until next October. So anything that they do in putting this team together for 2024, the people that put your 2023 Yankees together are the team the team of people that's going to put right. this team together. Also, the analytics um, evaluators, they were recommended by the assistant GM of the Yankees Michael Fishman. Michael Fishman is the head of analytics for the Yankees. He knows these people. Would he ever recommend people that he didn't think were in lockstep with the things? And Michael Fishman's a good guy. But if you think that there's a problem with the analytics, why should the head of analytics be the one who recommends the analytics evaluation firm? It's like an organization uh, investigating themselves for some... Well, in Ill college. Yeah, like yeah. NCAA kind of will investigate it. And then they, oh, by the way, happen to find nothing. There was also a quote that was following Greg Joyce, who covers the, um, covers the Yankees and was uh, live tweeting during Hal. Hal Steinbrenner says that the heat the Yankees analytics has gotten is not justified. Right. You know, so the, so, so you, I mean, you've been saying this for weeks. Yeah. They're, they're going to say we're good. Yeah, they're going to say they're good. And they're going to make little subtle changes that nobody else is really going to notice. And they're going to hope that maybe they can trade for Soto or sign Bellinger or something to maybe get Otani, convince him to come here. <laughs> And that'll make everybody feel better. I, I don't think Otani can but come. But I, I don't. I don't think. Not, so, I, I don't think so either. But the but the point is, Michael, they're going to have to do something significant enough to convince this fan base that at least they were listened to, and that something may change. Otherwise, I really do think it's going to affect attendance next year because this fan base collectively has lost belief in this team. And if you just roll it back. And say, oh, we made some subtle changes to the analytics. You're not going to notice right away, but it's good long term. Or, or even Bellinger, I don't think, is going to be enough to move the needle to get these fans convinced that everything is going to turn around. Uh, he would not commit to a $300 million payroll. 
Uh, he said, look at the teams that have won the World Series. They didn't have a $300 million. Really, there's one team with a $300 million payroll, and they were a colossal failure last year, mm -hmm. and that's the Mets. Uh, he also said, you know, Aaron Boone is his manager. And he asked, he asked people that he respects their thoughts on Boone, and they all gave the affirmative. And the four people he asked were Brian Sabian, Omar Minaya, the two guys they brought in, you know, baseball lifers, Andy Pettit, mm. and Nick Swisher. That's, 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 a, a, that's, an that's a weird ending to that list. That's an <laughs> eclectic group of people. Now, I know that Brian is a huge fan of Nick Swisher. So Nick Swisher does hold some sway. And he was around the Yankees on the road a couple of times during the year, and he knows baseball, obviously, but that's one of the people that he went to. Also went to the players. Now, no player on the and, and I, I don't think that Boone was a problem last year. Not one player on the Yankees would say, get, yeah, get rid of him. Judge loves Aaron Boone. Cole loves Aaron Boone. So he asked, like, the leaders of the team. They all said, yeah, he's the guy. That's an odd way to evaluate the manager, but I, I, I do believe yeah. that Aaron Boone's a good manager, that the, the team went but, you know, off the road with injuries and stuff like that. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. But here's the, the big thing of the big change that they're making that, that you can actually sink your teeth into. Aaron Boone told the decision makers, our, our player development people are not teaching guys to bunt. We don't bunt enough. So they're going to teach the guys in the minors to bunt more. That will make some callers happy. <laughs> but, I mean, do you think that that was a problem with the Yankees last year? So, no. I mean, maybe Boone wants to bunt and move runners. But, you know, you can move a runner to second base. But if the next two guys strike out and don't put the ball into play, what does it mean? I mean, it's a, now a bunt from second to third is another story because at least a fly ball gets you in. The Yankee problem is that they're teaching hitting. That but it's swing and miss is still the but thing. But this is interesting because the fundamentally, and going back to the movie Moneyball, they, it's it's literally and figuratively a four-letter word bunt. Like they don't even want to do it, right? Because it's twenty-seven it, outs and a sacrifice. Right. And you said that Aaron Boone's in lockstep with all the analytics. And and Steinbrenner said today that is not true. He said the that criticism is unfair. He makes a lot of decisions on his own. All but right. one thing I remember, they, because we have the tape, if they want to deny it, Brian Cashman was on here five, six years ago. I said, could a manager of the Yankees go with their gut against the numbers? He goes, absolutely, but it better work. Otherwise, they're going to be questioned. Yeah, which is the semantics of saying that yeah, you, you, you have a say, you right, but work. you don't have a say. Because if there's zero tolerance for an error, which is going to happen, then you really don't have any kind of wiggle room. So kind of an interesting you know, half hour with, with Hal Steinbrenner. We're going to try to get him on at some point, but, um, you know, he promised big changes. And unless you go out and get Soto, and unless you sign Otani, unless you get Bellinger, what really is a big change? I, in my personal opinion, what they're going to do, I think they will try to sign a Japanese pitcher who's supposedly unbelievable, but there's a lot of teams that want him. Right. And I think they'll sign Kevin Kiermaier okay. to play center field. He just won a gold glove. He's won a platinum glove in the past. He's a great outfielder. They actually hit better last year with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. But, I, I mean, do they have the stomach to go for Bellinger at $35 million a year? I don't know. Money is going to get ridiculous. And he also said that on the on the payroll next year, it's going to be a lot of, a couple of the kids that came up last year. Now, Dominguez is not going to be available no. until July. So I'm trying to figure out who are those kids are they bringing up. And the only two I can think of is Austin Wells and Oswald Peraza. Because Volpe's already here, Cabrera's already here. But to start the roster on opening day, I think it's got to be Austin Wells, who will platoon with Trevino, right. and Peraza, who they might play at third base. Okay. Not, again, earth-shattering. Right. And I don't think – I think you bring up a good point and something the Yankees have never had to worry about. How will fans react? And will they, will they buy season tickets? Because everybody kept talking about, well, look, at the building is full, even though they were under 500. Those tickets were bought at the beginning of the season during the winter time. And right now, Michael, how are you hyping up to go buy tickets for a 500 team? Because they were 82 and 80. Right. right? So you're going to have to sell something. Um, yeah, you could sell Aaron Judge. You could maybe, maybe you can sell the return of some of the injured players. But coming off one of their worst seasons in recent memory, Michael, how are you going to get fans to want to invest in tickets that are probably going to go up? It, it, you might you might feel it unless something happens. All right, here's how, before we break, summing up the 2023 season. 
I think Cash summed it up. I mean, it was awful. I mean, we we accomplished nothing. We we didn't win a division, didn't make it to the playoffs, didn't win a series in the playoffs, much less a championship. Uh, you know, I, I went over the winning record. That's a requirement as far as I'm concerned. So the fans uh, didn't get anywhere close to what they deserve. But, you know, we're all very passionate about this. We're, we're working our ass off. And, um, you know, we're going to do everything we can to right the ship for 2024. But uh, bad year. It's a bad year, and I, I think that the Yankees are going to get caught in a situation where they have to throw a shiny object at the fans. Now, the shiny object is not going to be somebody of significance losing their job. I mean, they're going to have a new hitting coach. Mm -hmm. The shiny object has to be a big star that's going to move the needle. Are they going to get into the Soto sweepstakes? I don't think Otani fits as long as you have Stanton, so I don't think they should get into that. And is a great Japanese pitcher, I think, Yoshinobu, uh, is, he, is he something that will move the needle? Because he's supposed to be amazing, and he's young. Uh, we'll come back. Brian Cashin is going to talk in uh, just a moment. We'll listen in on that. But first, Don's going to tell us about Bath Fitter. Don McGregor. Dinner al fresco. All worries forgotten. Broken fridge with food that is rotten. Birthday cake for everyone. This blown fuse is no fun. Getting him to brush is no longer a chore. The sink is overflowing onto the floor. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered parts of appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. with great fabrics and design at the perfect untucked length. So you can look sharp in this new business comfortable world. Just look for our signature sale. Untuck it 10 years in the making and we're nowhere close to stopping. Visit untuckit.com or your nearest store today. Folks these days need to protect one another. We should care about our neighbors. That's why I tell everyone I know about CarShield. CarShield was founded to protect drivers from the high cost of car repairs because money's tight. The car breakdown shouldn't stop you from putting food on the table. I can tell my friends, CarShield has helped millions of drivers from having to pay for unexpected car repairs. All you have to do is call CarShield before your car breaks down. Well, after working for 30 years, I appreciate the fact that CarShield enables me to have a much less stressful, carefree life. With the flexibility to go where I want, when I want, not having to worry. A plan through CarShield pays for expensive repairs on your out-of-warranty car or truck. And with their price lock guarantee, CarShield's low monthly rate never goes up as long as you cover your car. My family depends on my truck every day. With a plan through CarShield, you can get protection over 5,000 major parts and systems. I'm talking big money items like your transmission, engine, electronics, and so much more. If any one of these breaks down, you could be stuck with thousands of repairs. So don't wait. You want peace of mind driving the car you love without worrying about a breakdown? And call CarShield. Working for the Department of Defense, I know a thing or two about being prepared. And that's why I called CarShield. And you should too. If you love something, you protect it. That's why I called CarShield, to protect my car. Plans through CarShield also include many extra benefits at no extra cost, like roadside assistance, free towing, help with flat or damaged tires, and lockout help. Don't pay for those things separately when you can get them included through a plan with CarShield. CarShield is here to keep you on the road and turn car breakdowns and the repair costs that follow to just tiny bumps in the road. Call now. Protect yourself from the unprecedented rise in cost for parts and repairs. Call now to save money with your price lock guarantee. Call 800 514-7556. 800-514-7556. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos lung cancer, choose the right law firm by asking, what are your highest verdicts? What experience do you have? How many lawyers are on staff? How many clients have you represented? Speak to Weitz and Luxembourg at 800-LAW-6789 to get unmatched answers. It's the biggest financial decision of your life. Call 800-LAW-6789 or visit misowin.com. What's up, everybody? Chef Marcus Samson here at Home Plate New York. Today, it's all about Mr. Paul O'Neill. Out of all the Yankees that I cooked with, you have the best eating habits by far. <laughs> 98 best team that I was ever part of. Check out Home Plate New York, streaming now on the Yes app. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. Yeah. Play band. <sighs> Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Here in New York City, uh, we had Robert Sala on trying to explain what happened in that game last night against the Chargers. A huge loss for the Jets with playoff implications. Jets now drop to 11th in the AFC and... You know, they're in a tie record-wise with the Chargers, but they've got to beat the Chargers by one because if it's a tie, the, the first tiebreaker is head-to-head, -head, and the Chargers won that. And when we had Robert Sala on his weekly segment here on the show, um, he really didn't have much to debate about. The team didn't play well. Uh, I did ask him, though, you know, we're all in the agreement that Zach Wilson was not alone, but he played terribly. He has not played well. They had that one great drive against... Um, Kansas City, he shows glimpses, but for the most part, he holds on to the ball too long, not reading progressions well. He's just not doing it. He hasn't done it for three years, so it's not like he's in a slump. This is who he is. And I asked him uh, when he was on with us, Robert Sala, uh, why not give Simeon a shot? You've got Trevor Simeon in your building. Why Why not give him a try? Fair question. You know, it's uh, like I said, he, he, I don't know. You got me. I'm, I'm going to plead the fifth on all this one in terms of just, I kind of explained it, you know, yeah. respectfully, obviously, but mm -hmm. but it's a va they're valid questions, but and I know and I know from a passionate fan, from fans who are passionate, all having the same questions, I respect it greatly, you know, but it's, I've got to look at it from a global standpoint and just see where we are and, and look at the all 22 the best I can and, and make the decision as best as possible. So, Listen, global. if you're listening right now, you're listening, we have you, okay? If you miss Sala, which was about 345. We, we don't have to sell the podcast. It's the most listened to podcast of any local show in the country. That's right. But Talk if you want to hear somebody bare a soul, and if you want to hear somebody raw, listen to that interview with Robert Sala, a coach, because football coaches pride themselves, Don. We talk about this all the time. Arrogance, having all the answers, and you're wrong and I'm right. That was not what we got no. from Robert Sala today. It was like, a man kind of grasping. How do I defend keeping Zach Wilson in there? Where do I go if I, in fact, take Zach Wilson out? How bad is my team with the four lost offensive linemen since the beginning of the season? Where is my team without Aaron Rodgers? He wasn't arrogant. He wasn't cocky. He wasn't combative. He just sound, uh, maybe this is a little dramatic, but you kind of hinted at this, Peter. He sounded a little broken. He did. And when I said that to him, he, he said he felt embarrassed. Yeah. Well, just imagine you're defending a friend who's a, who's a bad guy. You know, and every, every day, Carl, you, you just don't know him the way I do. You don't see the way he is when he's, when he's behind closed doors. He's a really good guy. And that person keeps making mistakes and doing bad things. And then eventually you throw up your arms and go, I, I don't know what to say anymore. This guy has come on every week to tell us that they see something, that he's progressing. Now, they've been able to hide behind wins and get some fans to buy into it because they were winning games. But last night, when the play's bad, you get blown out, and how could he possibly come back on and say all the things that he was saying when you were winning? Oh, no, we see it, guys. It's progressing. Now it's turned into, well, this is just where it is, where he doesn't have any answers because how much more can he defend it, Michael? How much more? You don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure out what you're seeing. It's yeah, not it, good. It was it was bad yesterday, and there's very little that you could say other than that 
Zach Wilson's not the answer. He should never have been the answer as the backup quarterback. He should have been the third quarterback on the practice squad learning from a Hall of Famer. And, and, and again, I don't know the salary cap implications, although the Jets did have room with all the money that they saved with Aaron Rodgers. But the same can be said for the Giants. I gave the Giants a break with Tommy DeVito because he was on the practice squad. And who thought that you would lose two quarterbacks? But when you lost Jones then wouldn't you then start looking for someone that could play better than a guy that's on your practice squad? Because, like, Michael, if you've got a third-string quarterback, there is a scenario in which that guy might have to play. So why do you have somebody that you don't want throwing the football on your roster? You're telling me there's no other quarterback out there that you could have gotten on the cheap that you would have had faith to throw the ball in the second half of the Jet game. And then that does, now that could be your starting quarterback the rest of the way, now you're going to have Tommy DeVito play in a game against the Dallas Cowboys. Is that fair to Tommy? Is that fair to Giant fans? We'd make fun during the Kaepernick stuff, Peter, right? All the quarterbacks you can go out and sign. They're everywhere. They grow on trees, for God's sakes. Guys with former postseason experience, regular season experience. And you have a guy on your roster that you can't allowed to throw the football, that you have two quarterbacks, the Jets have two quarterbacks on their roster, and the head coach is still going with Zach Wilson despite the mistakes and the turnovers and the fumbles and the full starts and complete lack of ability to score a touchdown? Why isn't anybody going out and getting better quarterbacks to put on your roster? Why? Yeah, it, Carson it, Wentz, I get, I get that he's a nozzle, and apparently he ruins rooms, and he stinks. But isn't he better than everybody the Jets have right now? Yeah, by is a he, lot. Is he better than everybody the Giants have right now? Besides Tyrod Taylor, is not available, yeah. And now finally, going into week 10, he signs with the Rams. And, and by the way, I mean, we've been beating this up all year long, guys. I mean, going back to the summer, it was just, what are you going to do? And, and I know we can argue back and forth about whether or not the Rodgers injury is related to his age. Michael, I, I, I personally refuse to accept that you can rule out age being a factor when you have an injury on the fourth play of a season. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't a particularly unusual play. But no matter whether it was or not, you had to think with a nearly 40-year-old quarterback, there's a good chance we're going to need a backup for multiple games, and we don't want to throw away what they believed was going to be a Super Bowl contending season. So you need someone who could have kept this team afloat at any point throughout the year. They didn't do that. And, and I think the mistake was made then. I, I think they're kind of caught and locked into Zach Wilson now because of that very short-sighted mistake. Now, you could say the Jet offenses look bad. You could put it on hacking. Hack it, but if you look at the offensive gurus, right, in the NFL, the guys that are considered offensive gurus, when they don't have a quarterback, they don't look good. Stefanski struggled. Sean Payton has struggled. McDaniels fired. Arthur Smith. Frank Wright. LaFleur in, in Green Bay. Dable, offensive genius with Buffalo. No quarterback, you can't make it work. So... People want to blame Sala. They want to blame Hackett. I'm telling you, and I like the guy, I'm blaming Joe Douglas or whomever told Joe Douglas to do this. You should not have come into this season with that guy backing up. He couldn't play last year. What makes you think he could play this year? Bottom line, you made well, the mistake then, and now Robert Sala has to wallow in that mistake. So who is it? I don't Who, know. Who's is it is it Woody? Is it that relationship they're talking about with the family? Like, hey, listen, I'm sorry. I, I love I love your son, and I'm 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 friends with your family, but I got a chance to get Aaron Rodgers. I'm getting him. But then Rodgers gets hurt, and then you go right back to the kid. Like everything that happened last year didn't happen. It's it's odd because, and I just feel bad for every single one of those players on defense. They're killing themselves to be the best defense in football. And well, the way years things are away. going right now, it's a throwaway season. And, and one of the re the reason you hired Robert Sala, he's a defensive genius. But you know what? It's worked. It's worked. It's not like he's throwing away the defense. I mean, we've seen coaches that were hired as so-and-so geniuses, and that side of the ball is not great. Like with the Ravens, right? Right. Uh, with um, with Billick? Yeah. yeah. Offensive genius, they couldn't score. But this guy has held up his end of the bargain. You could give Albert credit, too, but that defense is stout. 
it, it, if it's not the best defense in football, it's certainly in the conversation. The yeah. offense is the problem. And how often and how long do you get with these defenses before people say, hey, enough is enough. I'm not wasting my time here. And you're going to start having people say before their yeah. deal's even up, I want to extend right now or I want to move on. I want to guarantee that what, what my future is. Because yeah. you're risking injury every week, Don, for what reason? And, and Peter kind of made this point <laughs> earlier when you were talking about you know, life without Rodgers and is it going to be uh, a complete mess if they don't win a championship with this guy? But think about everything they've done because of Aaron Rodgers. You bring in Aaron Rodgers, you bring in Nathaniel Hackett first. I don't know how good a, 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 an offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett is. Is it just because he doesn't have a quarterback or he doesn't have Aaron Rodgers? So what's going to happen, Michael, when Rodgers is gone? Is Nathaniel Hackett going to stay? I mean, all these players that they got for Rodgers, I mean, they haven't played well. Are they going to be around? Like, so you better hope that you at least get back, get Rodgers back at some point because once once Rodgers is done, win, lose, or draw, you're going to have to start from scratch again because hey, you build your whole team around him playing for you. Yeah, but you know what? If, 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 if he's here another two years, we'll all be fortunate, and the NFL stands for not for long. So, I mean, they've yeah, got to really true. seize upon this because, as Peter said, yeah, Bryce Huffis has to be signed this year. He's been an unbelievable rock for them. Are they going to sign him? Are they going to keep this defense together? We don't know. So and, and nothing lasts forever in the NFL. It's the teams that go on and on like the Patriots for so long that are, are the outliers. But, but also for everybody who thinks, well, boy, if Rodgers was healthy, we'd win a Super Bowl. You're going to be much better than you are right now. But to Michael's point to open the show, all these false starts, pre-snap penalties, um, lack of imagination on offense, slow starts. I, I, Michael, how do we know that Aaron Rodgers wouldn't have got hurt another way, the way this offensive line's been a sieve? No, absolutely. Now, he'd get rid of the ball quicker and be much better than Zach Wilson. I get it. But this offensive line isn't great. And you can make the case the whole reason Rodgers got hurt was because he held on the ball too long and the offensive line didn't protect him in, in the early portion of that game. So they got to get a lot of other things right. Once this season is over... They're going to make sure this offensive line gets better and just hope upon hope that Rodgers does come back at the same capacity before he got hurt. Now, we talked about what Hal Steinberger said earlier, pretty much said Boone staying, the, the analytic uh, evaluation is going to be a year-long thing. Uh, they talked about maybe having the instructors and the minors teach bunting more because Boone wants bunting. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, Cashman's speaking right now. But David Stearns, the new president of baseball operations for the Mets, is speaking. Uh, he has spoken already, and he was asked, were you surprised that council went to the Cubs? Yeah, I didn't see that coming. I love Craig, and Craig and I are, are going to be close, hopefully for a long time. I think he's very good at what he does, and throughout this whole process, you know, what I told Craig is, is he needs to make the right choice for himself, for him and his family, for what really fires him up and gets him going, and I'm happy that, that he did. We talked about it, clearly, and I don't know. You know, Craig can play things pretty close to the vest, and in, in this case, clearly he played it very close to the vest because none of us had any idea of, of where this was headed. The truth is I never really knew, and ultimately, he's a really smart guy he he factored in all the information and he made he made the right decision for himself he, he, for, I, I talked to some baseball people today high high baseball people that have been in the game forever and one of them said to me the Mets dodged a bullet and I said why hmm. I said council is snarky when questioned in Milwaukee he oh, knows boy. himself that's why he wasn't gonna come here so what he did was he goes to a big market team which is literally a 90-minute drive from Milwaukee. Yes. So he could still live in his home. His his two daughters who were in high school, they could still stay in that high school. His sons play baseball in the Big Ten for two different schools. So he's within, you know, distance of them. It was a smart move for him. It got big money. And it probably was a good thing for the Mets because he probably would have not had. And by the way, everybody, all you Mets fans that are down about this, one in nine in his last ten playoff games. Yeah. So the, the one that when the heat is on. And also, let's face it, in Chicago with the Cubs, if the beer is cold and the sun's out, they're good. So he's not going to get scrutinized the way he would get scrutinized in New York. How about this? Andy Martino tweeted this out. I didn't read it because uh, I don't think it's true. You think that's true? If the, he, he, Andy Martino, is he, did he get hacked? Is this his, his account? It yeah, 83,000.5. Yeah, 
Pete, ready for this, Peter? See, this is where Brian gets himself in so much trouble. This is an amazing quote. you got to hear this. Okay. Brian Cashman, I think we're pretty blanking good, personally. And the blanking begins with an F. You, you were 82 and 80, and you're going to sit there with all the changes that you, they're, they're, your owner's talking about, unacceptable, fourth place, two games above 500. He's going to sit there and think his team's pretty blanking good. And you tell me that this isn't a team that's going to roll it back? How, uh, Why would he say that? A minute before he, he sent that tweet out, he said, Brian Cashman is offering a loud defense of the Yankees' operation right now, saying the word BS, the word, uh, multiple times, and challenging the group uh, that uh, uh, we know that they have one of the biggest pro scouting departments and smallest analytics. Pretty fascinating. All right. Well, guess what? This is not what I expected. I, Brian, Brian, he doesn't look it. He's a tough dude. Well, and, and by tough, do you mean stubborn? He's stubborn, and he's tough, and he will fight for what he thinks is right. And, 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 and he thinks you're wrong. Right. Very right. defensive about this. Oh, that, that's fine, and I like that character in a person. But doesn't it to come across as, as tone deaf to a fan base that wants changes? Your owner five minutes ago told us that it just said we played the cuts. He's, that he's not satisfied with the season. Told us that if they if they have a, a losing season or close to a losing season, big changes were going to happen. They almost finished in last place. There were two games above 500. Oh, man. The owner's unhappy. The fan base is unhappy. And now the general manager, who everybody wants out. I was about to say, who everyone in the fan base wants out more than anyone. good. Not only are we good, but we're, we're great. Pre we're pretty we're bleeping. bleeping. What'd you say, Anthony? Okay. So wow. he, he's got here, – here's here's Brian um, think, saying that he thinks that we have a good operation. I've been here with the Yankees for a long time. Whether that's a good thing, what our fans or perception want to say or not, I'm proud of our operation. I think we have a great group of baseball people. And I think we have a very strong process that has served us well up until what happened this particular season. You know, certainly that cause for evaluation, that does cause for self-reflection, which always will be the case regardless. Uh, we do that even when we're flying high. We had 99 wins the previous year and, and got knocked out in the AFCS, but it didn't stop me from onboarding two great baseball people. So this one we go back at the wheel and it's now about 24 and we look to be a phoenix rising out of the ashes to find a way at the end of the day that's the challenge every year so it's what we're going through right now is no different you know than any other season but this year the big difference is we didn't punch a ticket to the postseason we didn't get a chance to take a shot at the title because we took ourselves out of it you know earlier the the one thing i would say you know you, you're talking about the process is good well the yankees do make the playoffs every year they didn't make it last year and they do finish over 500 for, for 30 years straight. Teams don't do that. But to say the process is not flawed, you traded for Josh Donaldson. That was like setting fire to $50 million. You traded for Frankie Montas. He was not healthy. I mean, I can go chapter and verse. You traded for Harrison Bader, who I like, and played a good center field and helped them win the first round two years ago. But then you traded him. You pretty much traded him for nothing. So you gave up on him. That wasn't a good move for you. I mean, we can go on and on, chapter and verse, of the things that haven't worked out. So there could be parts of the analytics group that, that are great and smart, and obviously there are, but the evaluation of pitchers, it's not working. The evaluation of position players, not working. Holding on to Gary Sanchez as long as you did, not working. Holding on to Ann Duhar as long as you did, not working. So there are things in the trade market where you, you, you're getting injured players. So something is not jiving. Something's not working. It's hard to defend that. Listen, I don't jump them for not making the playoffs for one year. But when you see a steady pattern of the trades that you make, they don't work out. They don't work out. Josh Donaldson, it cost you $50 million and the ability to do other things. And you, you brought in IKF, who turned out to be a good utility player, but you brought him in to be your shortstop. He couldn't get it done. You benched him in the playoffs. So to, to say that nothing's wrong, first Hal said there are going to be major changes. They were not. And now you got the GM saying we're pretty bleeping good. You're 82 and 80. Now, I know there are a lot of things that went wrong. I get it. But there are a lot of things that went right. Garrett Cole had one of the best seasons you'll ever see. There were a lot of injuries. But are they going to come back? Is Rizzo going to be the player he was before the, the, uh, the concussion? Who's playing third base? Are you going to keep Glaber Torres the last year of his contract? Because if you do, you better sign him to a long-term deal. 
Is Austin Wells good enough to platoon with Trevino and play the majority of the time behind the plate because he's a left-handed batter and 75% of starters are righties? I mean, there's a lot of questions there, Don. I give, I give Cashman credit for having the onions to say that. To a fan base yeah, that's well, in sense. Oof. I get it, but you know what? Is it? Does it really take onions when you know, Michael, that you've got a job for life? But you don't want to inflame the fan base. Though. Well, he doesn't seem to care because he knows he's not going to get... He knows how much the fans hate him. I'm sure he listens. I'm sure he has yes on in the office during the course of the summer where almost every other phone call is fire Brian. He heard the chance during the ceremonies. He heard the chance during the game. doesn't care. So, so good on him from a character standpoint, but the fan base is going to be enraged here. They're getting mocked. I, I think the audit's a sham, and they're going to come back and say, we're good. Just one of those years. Don't worry. We'll be right back. Here is Brian saying that we are not analytically driven. People talk about we're analytically driven, right? We have the smallest analytics department in the American League East. Is that a shocker to you guys? We have the largest pro scouting department in all of baseball. Is that a shocker to you to everybody? Shouldn't be, but no one's doing their deep dives. They're just throwing ammunition and, and bullshit and accusing us of being run analytically. Analytics is an important spoke in our wheel, but it, it should be in everybody's wheel, and it really is, is an important spoke in every operation that's having success. There's not one team that's not using it. We're, we're no different. But to be said we're guided by analytics as a driver, it's a lie. But that's what people want to say. I know I can't change that narrative. All I can continue to do is say bullshit, not true. But I will guarantee it's important, and it, we utilize it, along with our pro scouting opinions, along with our amateur scouting opinions. And, yes, yeah, sometimes we do better than and sometimes we do worse with some of our decisions sometimes they don't work out but that's also part of the process and we've had obviously our fair share in the more recent two seasons that haven't worked out you know some of it because of injuries but, but you can't all right, all right. Oh, so, so what boy. they what they've done what they decided to do if, if i can say since the season ended they stood against the ropes and and took all the punches covered up and now they're coming out saying you're all wrong we're right and yeah. now they're throwing they punches. played a dope they played the rope, but now they're going on the, the offensive. But, but, oh, but what I would ask Brian is, what does the size of the analytic department have to tell how reliant you are on the numbers? Like, I'm sure you've got scouts. And whatever the size of the analytic department, it's not so much the generation of the, athletic, uh, the analytic information. It's how much they utilize it. And by watching them, Michael, and you call the games, they seem to utilize it as much as anybody. So don't tell me, well, we've got a small analytics staff. What does that have to do with it? You could have one guy. But if you're living by those numbers like it's the Bible, that's the problem we have. Not how much information you're generating, how much you're relying on that information as if it's like almost a cult. Uh, uh, as they say in dodgeball, uh, interest, what was that? Interesting, um, interesting tactic. Let's see how it plays out. You know, the the character, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not a big dodgeball guy. Really, really. No. Thought it was a wildly what's overrated. His, what's I liked his, it, but I didn't love it. Yeah, Jason Bateman's character, Jacob. He, he said, um, interesting. Pepper Brooks is. is I don't remember the quote. It's not that, but it's it's something along those. Well, you can oh, probably find. Uh, it. Interesting move, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting move. Yeah, that, Let's that's. See how it plays uh, there's more to do here on because this. Because you know what? Saying he could not have said that two days after the season ended. He was smart. He let about a, a month and a half go by. So, so. But he it, must really feel empowered, by the way. Oh, of course he, he does. He, but I mean, he. But what I'm saying is, anyone who ever thinks, and and back to back to me being right about everything, Don. Anyone who ever thinks that it's as simple as he is under the employ of the Steinbrenners has this wrong. You have to be a Steinbrenner to have that tone. You could not actually be on eggshells in any way with your employer and take on that tone. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I respect the loyalty. But, guys, that's not a guy who's worried about his job. No. no, no at all. And I said GMs are, have one job, and that's to build a winning team. They don't care about crowds. They don't care about how the, the team is liked or not. They, their job is to build a team. But if I'm the Yankee front office, business office, this doesn't play well. You're talking to fans right here. You're not just talking to the media because the fans feel like this. And also, the, what, uh, by the way, it's interesting strategy, Cotton. Let's see how that <laughs> plays right. out. And what hill are you? What hill was he dying on to? The getting angry about whether it's analytics or scouting. It, no matter what it is, it's not working. It, it's it's not a great look because it comes off as arrogant. Yeah. That's not what fans want to hear. It'll be interesting. Let's hear from fans as well. But first, let's hear from Peter. Peter. You're finally mastering Grandma's 12-hour sauce. Your stovetop gave out in the 11th hour. 
Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems. Protect what you don't expect. Visit AHS.com and get a free quote today. You done yet? It's 2 a.m. Why are you still scrolling through videos? You're not paying me overtime here. If you really want to see something new, why not change those shades that have been broken for the past two years? Let's tap the Thumbtack app, and in a matter of seconds, we'll find a pro to install new shades. Okay. With Thumbtack, you can easily find top-rated professionals for every home project. Thumbtack, the easy way to care for your home. With ButcherBox, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. Get a 10 to 14 pound turkey free in your first box. Butcher Box. For far too long, millions of Americans have been strapping on uncomfortable work boots pushed by out-of-touch corporate types. Hey! Whoa. To design boots and apparel that hardworking men and women actually want, you have to get on the job site and listen. And that's why Brunt names gear after guys like us. Apart from making our boots and apparel innovative, reliable, and insanely comfortable, we back all of our gear with a 30-day on-the-job risk-free trial. You deserve better. You deserve Brunt. Try any of Brunt's gear on the job for 30 days risk-free. I was tired of being told by my doctor that my weight was always the root of my problems. Found changed that. I'm down 78 pounds because of Found, and I'm just getting started. Found paired me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. Their team of behavioral experts helped me to make lasting changes. Finally, I found a program that fits my lifestyle, improved my health, helped me reclaim my confidence. Try it out. Head to joinfound.com to start. usa.org Totally, but keep swiping. This is so much fun. This makes it so easy. Yes, that was a good one. Let's go. Yes. Play your favorite slots today and you can win the next big jackpot. Sign up now and we'll match your first deposit up to $1,000 in casino bonus funds plus 200 free spins. Only at GoldenNuggetCasino.com. When I hit 80, I needed help around the home. A friend of mine told me to call Freedom Care, and they'll pay my granddaughter to take care of me. Funded by Medicaid, Freedom Care allows people to choose who provides their care, and the caregiver gets paid instantly after their shift. Life is sweeter with her around. Nanny gave me so much joy as a child. Now it's my turn to return the love. Call now to find out benefits and pay, and how fast you can get started.
New Yorkers have an answer for everything. But in the face of an emergency or disruption, we can all stand to be more prepared. With Notify NYC, you can get hyper-local and verified alerts from the city of New York, telling you about what's happening directly around you and what you should do about it. And maybe give a friend a helping hand. Get ready with Notify NYC. For more information and to sign up, visit nyc.gov slash notify or call 311 or download the Notify NYC app. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Yes. I text Peter on Friday. I stumbled upon this song on Sirius XM. This is one of your old songs. Literally next week, it'll be the 20th anniversary of this song. One of the great hip-hop songs of all time. Yeah. I know it exists. I've heard it referenced, maybe. referenced in brief little snippets here and there. For the first time, last Friday, I heard the song in its entirety. Unbelievable. Downloaded it instantly. I've I fly into Minnesota. I must have listened to it on a loop twenty times. Jacob Got Better, you love time. the story. <laughs> it's crazy. I love Don LaGreca now. I learn something more about him every day. Well, every day you learn something. He he hit me up the other day completely in earnest. Just I, I, I discovered this ninety nine problem. I gotta tell you, this is this is something. But don't make it sound like I didn't no, know No, he was it aware existed. of it. I, of course, how are you not aware of it? Uh, he was aware of it, but the way and now you can have a whole different appreciation for the fact that you know, nearly 20 years ago, right around 20 years ago, maybe 19 years ago, he did Glastonbury, and after and after Oasis had dissed him and said, "What is Glastonbury doing? Doing hip hop at Glastonbury? This is ridiculous. How could a hip hop artist headline that he opened up by playing Wonderwall, Wonderwall with a guitar around him, his neck?" <laughs> And then the second it ended went right into if you haven't girl problems. You can appreciate that moment now. Let's appreciate more of what Brian Cashman. Oh, sure. Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, this is because another... Yankees fans have 99 problems, and Brian Cashman <laughs> is the biggest one here's by Bri far. Here's Brian. We lost enough not to make the postseason, but then what happens with a big market? You get a lot of people with a lot of opinions you're getting from outside the organization that are throwing daggers from inside the organization, different people that are actually you work with that, that have strong opinions of, well, if we went this way versus that way, and it starts playing out in the papers and everybody starts picking you apart, that's what happens when you lose. So I don't like losing. I don't like not making the playoffs. Our fans deserve better. Our owner deserves better. So we're back at it trying to figure it out. That, yeah, that does involve a lot of tough conversations, but. I do understand that it's important to separate what's real right. versus what's not real. What's just crap noise versus what, hey, that's action items right there. And that's what we're doing. I promise you that's what we're doing. I mean, do we have to go ahead and do deep dives by publicly gutting ourselves and telling you everything we're doing internally as we assess what we've got going on? No, but I do want to share a few different bullet points like I just did earlier to kind of correct the narratives as, like, people say we're over-analytically driven. Well, what I could say, okay? Okay, I know that one deal that was analytically driven. I, I mean, what's analytically driven? Every team deals with analytics. Every single team. To what extent? That's only known internally. And I don't think it, it matters the amount of people that you have. It matters the amount of information that's funneled to players and coaches. Again, nobody knows that other than Aaron Boone and his coaches and the players. Joey Gallo was an analytically driven acquisition. Did they ever check with people that said Joey Gallo cannot function in New York City? He can't. They didn't because he's an analytic dream. So, again, I understand what Brian's saying. It's not like they're the only team doing this. Every team does it. To what extent? That's the secret. We'll never know. The analytic guys do not sit there on the podium. It's Aaron Boone. So we don't know. Only they know. So you're saying you know the biggest analytics Group in the at AL East. Okay, I believe you. But a lot of decisions the Yankees have made have been analytically driven. A lot. I'm not saying on the field. I'm saying player yeah, I, acquisition. And a lot of them worked out. Like the analytics groups of the Yankees, they found a Clay Holmes. This guy is much better than he's been pitching with the Pirates. He's turned out to be great. There's a lot of those instances, especially see, with relief pitchers. But there have been a lot of moves you. that were bad, too. I like Hal a lot. And I, and I do feel bad when Hal gets criticized for not caring, not spending money, and all that. If he really cares about this fan base today, he has to talk to Brian Cashman and say, you were, you were out of line. 
your tone, the way that you spoke to the media and to the fans today is out of line. Because basically what Brian Cashman was saying is you guys are too stupid to understand what we do. How dare you criticize us? We're the Yankees. We're smart. You're dumb. But in effect, like, we're the Lions and you're the sheep. He was Evan Neal. Brian Cashman was Evan Neal today. Boom. And boom, I don't have to tell Yankee fans to do that. I think they know. But, Michael, am I wrong? I mean, like, how cares about the fan? He's spitting in the face of the fans. I understand it frustrates you when you're the smartest guy in the room. I get it. We go through it all the time, right? Fans all think they know more than we do, and you and you go through all that, and you have to deal with it. But, but he is an employee of the New York Yankees, and their job is to sell tickets to their fan base. And he just told their fan base, "You're too stupid to understand what we do. How dare you criticize us?" I, I, Michael, sometimes you got to bite your tongue and just say the right thing. And the I, nice, think those things, absolutely think them. But when you say them out loud, it's arrogant and it disrespects your fan base. He is going to get destroyed for this. And I hope Hal talks to him because Hal gets it with the fans. Brian's losing people talking like that, this. He, I, he has to be getting a text after all these come I, out. I don't know. know. I, because this seems to me to be a strategy, Cotton. This is a strategy. <laughs> it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. I think that they all sat down. How are we going to approach this? That was a great point. How are we going to approach this? And we'll go on the offensive. I, I, no, I, I don't think it, they thought it was. And I don't think it was at the fans. My, they're, they they have uh, you know the um friendly fire they got they get it this is to all of us all of the people that yeah, criticize but, it the two analytics i think it was to some people within the organization too that pushed back but, against brian because you he, heard that too i know but he has to understand how that is going to be perceived all right he's talking to the media the media is going to write it. it's being tweeted the video's out there right now peter you look at the video you can see he's angry and i get it he's a human being and he wants to be angry but you've got to respect your fans and understand where they're coming from. Every my, you, We said, but when we did it with the Evan Neal, right, all the players probably agreed with Evan Neal, but they don't say it because they know that's not what you say. Can't say it. Brian, to attack, even if it's just attacking the media and the people that analyze baseball, who are you to talk like you invented the game of baseball, that you're above reproach, that how dare anybody criticize you? I, that's 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 not right to do, especially when you haven't won a championship since 2009 and won championship in what going on 23 years. Uh, this this tells me they're not going to make any major moves, and the way that they're defending running it back is they think they have a good team. If not for the injuries and things didn't go right, that's it's the only way you can interpret it. So that he's getting aggressive. That yeah. everybody's wrong, and he can be aggressive, Michael, because he's got a job for life. There's a lot of general managers can't do that because they get called on the carpet. The fans would revolt, and eventually, if you end up losing again, you'd get destroyed and you'd lose your job. Doesn't he talk like somebody, Peter, that's got no shot of ever losing his job? And maybe oh, he's yeah. being a mouthpiece for Hal. Maybe Hal 100% agrees with him. I don't know. But at least when Hal comes on, he at least puts on the front that he feels the fans' passion. He feels their pain. He's not going to tolerate losing anymore. What does Brian say? We're fine. And how dare you question us? Let's go to Justin in New Jersey. Justin. He's got to be kidding, right? Like, <laughs> Brian Cashman is now public enemy number one for this entire fan base. This is a joke. Like, I, I, I checked out after the All-Star game last year. I won't watch the team this year. And it's, I can't. he's getting torn apart right now on Twitter. And luck, rightfully so. I, I'm literally in shock that he actually said something this stupid. Well, I'll let you know a little secret, Justin. So... Don started reading a quote, which I had seen moments before. Right. And I didn't read it, Peter, because I thought it was a farce. I, uh, there's no way he said this. Oh, you thought, you thought it was uh, Sports Pickle? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I didn't want to be New York Sports. sports. <laughs> I didn't read it. I swear to God. I, I, because I, I trust Andy Martino as, as much once as I, anybody. Once I confirmed it was his account, right. I thought it was but, comfortable. And I like said, I'm say. not, somebody, somebody hacked Andy Martino. I thought that it was such an aggressive. Which, which one are we referring to? Oh, I think we're pretty bleeping good. And then you hear. I mean, the you're same. 82 and 80. God bless you. But 82 and 80, your record. Let's the, let's the, quote old Bill Parcells. Your record is. You, know, you are what your record. Yeah. I mean, the Orioles finished 18 games ahead of you, pal. 
Uh, really? That's why I didn't read it, Don. That's why I almost stopped you. For... <laughs> you <did. laughs> yeah, no, I saw your face, and then I got worried. Like, oh, is this maybe I got see, maybe I thought says... that that was so aggressive that if I read it and it was not real, that I, I would uh, people had a right to rip me. Right. But it was real. Once I saw it was Andy's account, you know, I'm I'd like, like to, right. I'd like to apologize. Actually, why? Music. <laughs> Earlier in the show. I disparaged this day, the day when we hear from the Yankees brass, because it's generally boring. Nothing is said of any interest, any import. They just kind of say, hey, nothing to see here. We're going to do our best. We're going to do X, Y. I did not know Brian Cashman was going to become that meme of the dog and the fire in the background. <laughs> I, I did not know that Cash was going to go out like this. I, this is Brian Cashman as Scarface in the, every version you want. I mean, he's just going hard in a way I did not expect at all. Because who would have, and guys, you know what kind of gall I'm referring to. Unmitigated. That's right. <laughs> who would have the unmitigated gall? After this season, to have this approach it, in a bizarre way, I respect it. Yeah, I know. I, hear uh, what you're I saying. sort of like like the fact that he's real, but at the same time, the problem is these arguments are won and lost with your record, and and you already lost in this past season. Well, how about this? He he goes on to defend. Oh, here we go. The acquisitions of Gallo and Gray. I get a kick out of like Joey Gallo gets named on, but since Joey Gallo left us, who's picked him up? Two playoff teams. The Dodgers trade him for us, and then the Twins, who just made the playoffs. Or Sonny Gray. He's currently in the competition for a Cy Young Award, right? It's interesting how they get written about these players. I get it, because whether they can play in New York or not, which is always a difficult thing, I don't care what anybody says. It's not easy to determine who can. You have to make decisions, try to engage people. I feel like we got to adjudicate the Joey Gallo decision over and over again. We went all in. We were out of balance. We needed a left-handed bat. It was a very limited market. I had a guy that played with him on our roster at the time. Odor, hey man, what's he like? Can he play in New York? I think he'd be great here. He can handle it, blah, blah, blah. We do the cross-check. We talk to as many people as you can. You make a decision. Then you live with it. Didn't work out. But since that time, the Dodgers wanted them. And since that time, the Twins wanted them. So I get a kick out of how all of a sudden it's decisions about players that are having that are really good Major League Baseball players or potentially you know, helpful Major League Baseball players and that we're dumb for getting them and other people, obviously, they're not dumb. Wow, Brian. I, oh I mean, first God. of all, he was terrible with the Dodgers. And here's a little secret. The Twins signed him. He was not on their playoff roster. He was so bad. And Sonny Gray, everybody knows Sonny Gray's a good pitcher. He can't pitch in New York. Nobody said that those were bad acquisitions in terms of talent, although to me, Joey Gallo hitting 190 and striking out 220 times, not a good player. But analytically, they believe he's a great player because he can walk, he can hit home runs, and he actually is a good base runner and a very good defender. He could not fit in New York. You ask Rugnet Odor, I, I talked to 10 people when that trade was made. They go, disaster. Did, I talked to 10 people. He cannot play in New York. But you ask Rugnet Odor. And Sonny Gray is a really good pitcher, but not in New York. I'm shocked. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. <laughs> it's not going to pay off. I, I, again, I'm Here's so my sorry. Bold prediction. I did not know it was going to be like this. The man brought heat. All right, you bring heat right now, Peter. I will. Get ready to start the NFL Week Off right now. You're finally mastering Grandma's 12-hour sauce. Your stovetop gave out in the 11th hour. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems. Protect what you don't expect. Visit AHS.com and get a free quote today. Hey, Joe. Five on diesel, five pop, lunch. Hey, buddy, you all right? Stupid old work boots, clunky as bricks. You ought to get you some brunt boots. Comfortable, lightweight, durable, and... Waterproof. You want to try them? There's comfortable sneakers. Yeah, they are. I'll give them back. Hey! Who stole your boots? Hey! Try any with Brunt's gear on the job for 30 days risk free. Yeah, 
I was tired of being told by my doctor that my weight was always the root of my problems. Found changed that. I'm down 78 pounds because of Found, and I'm just getting started. Found paired me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. Their team of behavioral experts helped me to make lasting changes. Finally, I found a program that fits my lifestyle, improved my health, helped me reclaim my confidence. Try it out. Head to joinfound.com to start. All right, here we go. It's a big responsibility to be a designer. Dagny Dover is a bag brand based in New York City, founded by three women. We make hyper-functional, performance-driven bags. That's like a mouthful. We're all about getting the most out of life. When you're organized and you have your things together, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can live life intentionally. Oh, <laughs> it's pronounced D Dagny Dover. Dagny means new dawn. It's a new dawn for fashion. Up your fan engagement with Yes Rewards on the Yes app. Watch live games and earn points. Play the hottest games and score more. Earn status, then redeem your points to win prizes. Yes Rewards on the Yes app. November.com. Children are the greatest joy and our best hope for a better future. Friends, they are the future. But did you know that millions of kids are facing hunger every day? Food is not just food. It's energy, health, confidence, hope, and even love. Yes, love. Thank you! Learn more about how No Kid Hungry is helping end child hunger in America at helpnokidhungry.org. Ten years ago, we started on Tuck It Out of My Apartment, and today we have more than 80 stores worldwide. It's been quite a journey. We didn't just create shirts designed to be worn untucked, we perfected them. With great fabrics and design at the perfect untucked length. So you can look sharp in this new business comfortable world. Just look for our signature sale. Untuck It, 10 years in the making, and we're nowhere close to stopping. Visit untuckit.com or your nearest store today. And we'll match your first deposit, plus throw in up to 1,000 free spins when you sign up for Hard Rock Bets. New fun and games added each month with more slots from Atlantic City. Brand new loyalty redeemed straight from your phone or in person. And new ways to withdraw. Faster, simpler, easier. Now our bets hit different because your app is different. Sign up now to get your first deposit matched and up to 1,000 free spins. Get your heart pumping with Well Life NYC on the Yes app. Take a tour of the hottest gyms. I'd love to have fun when I work out. And the coolest places to chill around New York. First, I'm going to be freezing at negative 200 degrees. Watch Well Life NYC, streaming now exclusively on the Yes app. Only one in five people with disabilities, including those with autism, are employed, despite many having the skill set and desire to work. Why? outdated stigmas and beliefs so let us make it easy this is a job for someone with autism this is a job for someone with autism so is this that job also perfect businesses value diversity but sometimes overlook the unique strengths and abilities of the autism community introducing win the workplace inclusion now program by autism speaks we bridge the gap and help businesses lead the way in inclusive hiring. Yes, these are all jobs for someone with autism. To learn more and lead the way in inclusive hiring, go to autismspeaks.org slash win. Yep, that job too. Your attention please. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Yes. back here for the Michael K show from 1942 through 1967 the National Hockey League consisted of just six teams which are affectionately referred to by hockey fans everywhere as the original six those teams are featured on this graphic right here there were two teams in Canada the Canadiens and the Maple Leafs and four teams in the United States Boston Chicago and the two teams matching up once again tonight at the Garden the Red Wings and the Rangers as you could probably guess they've had a lot of games head to head throughout the years here's a look at that long history of the rivalry that goes all the way back to the beginning of the league the Red Wings have the overall edge in the record department however lately across the last eight games in the head-to-head -head matchups the blue shirts have earned at least one point in eight of their last nine games against the wings and 15 of their last 17 by the way also the rangers have earned at least a point in their last seven games overall this season six wins and one shootout loss i think we're pretty bleeping good you know i i had said and not jokingly i meant it when i said it about what if what's going to happen if the audit says you're good that's not what happened. The Yankee said, we're good. Uh, Michael, does it feel like the the audit's like a complete fabrication? It just sounds fraudulent. When you hear Brian talk, does it sound like somebody that's open to suggestion to change? Well, when I find out the guy that suggested the company that's auditing them is, is one of the head analytic guys in the Yankees, the assistant GM, it, and Don brought this up. It's a perfect parallel. It's like a, a, a college in the NCAA Appointing somebody to like, you know, self discipline. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, we're going to do an internal investigation to find. By God, we're going to find out what happened here. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Oh, we, we did a thorough investigation. We found nothing. Let's go to Sal in Queens. Sal? Hello? Hello, Hello. Sal. Hey, what's going on? This guy, Cashman, is out of his mind. Talking about not analytically driven. If you're not analytically driven, why are you taking your pitchers out after five or six innings when they're on a roll? Why aren't you playing judge three games back from an injury when this guy's saying he's okay and you need to win a big series? Not analytically driven? Cashman's time is done. Move him upstairs. Get a new GM. I mean, he's been here for so long. Yeah, all right. He got his championships. He did his job. Okay, fine. But not analytically driven? And to come out talking like you're some mob boy, like you're untouchable? My man, we're fans. We don't need to be spoken to like we're stupid. We stick by through thick and thin. Yeah, we have a winning record. Like you said, two games over 500? You're effing good? You want to start cursing and dropping F-bombs and dropping BS bombs? Like, my man, what's going on with you? We <laughs> stick by you all the time. Not analytically driven? Not analytically driven? That is insane. If you're not analytically driven, why are you getting, why, why are you making the moves you're making? It makes no sense to say that. I don't get it. I don't well, get it. You said we're not analytically here. driven, then it says, well, so everybody is. But, see, that's, he doesn't have to, to me, he doesn't have to defend being analytically driven. Everybody in baseball is analytically driven. Even the guys like Bruce Bochy's team, that, putting together that team is analytically driven. Everybody has a big analytic presence. That's no thing, that's nothing to be ashamed of or have to defend. But to say we're not analytically, uh, then you'd be behind the eight ball because everybody's analytically driven. Everybody. I guess his claim is that they're not all into it as much as people claim they are. And his defense is because they don't have as big an analytical team. What does that have to do with anything? The numbers are the numbers. They live by those numbers. Michael, you call 135 games. We all watch pretty much every game. They are as analytically driven as any team in baseball. Cole is right. They don't bunt. They take pitch outside of Cole. They're quick uh, with the, with the hook right, starting pitchers. Huh? Boone says they Boone, don't Boone says enough. he doesn't. They bunt enough, but they don't bunt enough. The fans don't think they bunt enough because it's a analytics that tell you not to bunt. You know what? He, he's at the GM meetings right now in Arizona, and I bet you every GM will come up to him. Good job, Brian, because that's all they, they want to say. But oh, none yeah. of them have the the intestinal fortitude or the fight or the job security That's to exactly. actually have to say that, to be, have the opportunity to say it. I mean, again, for Brian to say that, it really is startling. And and, and, and the Yankees are pretty buttoned up. So I'm sure this thing was vetted. Well, how are we going to attack this? He's got a lot of pride. He's got a lot of fight. And he came out swinging. It, it, that was a month and a half in the making.
what he just said. And uh, He didn't just say it off the top of his head. And by the way, the thank you note from Zach Wilson is in the mail, Brian. Uh, and, and Robert Sala. Robert. See, I mean, but before an hour ago, Robert Sala's quotes on this show might have been something to talk about in the newspaper tomorrow. I, the, the back of the paper has been written. It's, a, it's amazing. I, I, I mean, he might come under fire in the papers tomorrow. You think? I mean, it could be pretty much our whole show tomorrow. I mean, it's going to be three and a half hours of it. All right, Ian ends coming up in just a moment. We'll revisit some of these amazing quotes like this one. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. For Let's him. see how it pays off. When I'm getting ready for a game, I have to be. Your dinner party was a hit. Your dishwasher took a hit. Your teen is giving laundry a try. Your dryer left you hung out to dry. Date night with the crush. Ah, your toilet won't flush. Luckily, American Home Shield is there to fix or replace covered appliances and home systems to help you stay on course and budget. Protect what you don't expect. Visit ahs.com and get a free quote today. We just signed the lease on our third shop. I guess we're a chain now, right? We've worked so hard to get here. My assistant went to customink.com to get our new uniforms and merch with all the location names. Our custom gear helps him get our brand out into the community. He takes care of all of our custom ink orders. He was able to find great products, upload the new art, and have boxes sent directly to each of the shops. Custom ink makes it so easy. Get started today at customink.com. Hey, Joe. Five old diesel, five pop, lunch. <laughs> Hey, buddy, you all right? Stupid old work boots, clunky as bricks. You ought to get you some Brunt boots. Comfortable, lightweight, durable, and waterproof. You want to try them? Where's comfortable sneakers? Yeah, they are. I'll give them back. Hey! Who stole your boots? Hey. Try any with Brunt's gear on the job for 30 days risk-free. There's an easy way to leave your family with money to help with expenses. It's guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance from Colonial Pen. Visit colonialpen.com for more information and a free gift. See everything your store can do with tools from Square. Your inventory automatically restocks, so you never run low. Your online store stays open 24-7, so you're always ready to sell. Your payments are processed in seconds, so customers can breeze through checkout. And with one account to manage it all, you've got more time for taking time out. Get your all-in-one retail system by signing up at square.com today. With ButcherBox, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. Get a 10 to 14 pound turkey free in your first box. Butcher Box. some help your tow chains are a little loose could spark a wildfire i could show you how to secure them properly if you'd like sure thanks a lot anytime you should check out smokybear.com they've got a bunch of tips on wildfire prevention only you can prevent wildfires with Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. Yeah. Play band. Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org.
What's up, everybody? Chef Marcus Samson here at Home Plate New York. Today, it's all about Mr. Paul O'Neill. Out of all the Yankees that I cooked with, you have the best eating habits by far. <laughs> 98 best team that I was ever part of. Check out Home Plate New York, streaming now on the Yes app. Welcome to ENN. Ray Rowe. Not Tiwi. It's presented tonight by... Wait for it. Ah, our good friends at Security Dodge. Come get some. I'd like to start off this big ENN by saying good evening to Michael. Come get him off your chest. And Don. I'm a shock, jock, yo-yo, blank bag. And Don. I need hits so I can be relevant. And, so, so true. And Don. A horse, a trident. And Joe Namath. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the old Johnny Carson. Um, remember that? Uh, yes. Karnak. Karnak, right. A horse, a trident, and Joe Namath. Right. Then he, a horse, yep. a trident, and Joe Namath. And you tear open the envelope and it says, What is a, a Q tip fever dream? <laughs> and good evening to myself. Burrow. Clean day. All, all I had long. Really? Please, you been a hack. Oh, you know what? It seems it seems unlikely that was the case. Burrow. You thought you thought you got rooked out of point guard. I did. You I were very I had, upset. I had a, there was a, there was a Wilson thing early I liked, and then I thought at very least my ninety nine problems uh, for Yankees fans of Brian Cashman is the I thought that could have alone. That could be the quote of the day. I, I thought the yeah. Point of the day. I, I, I guess we need so. another category. And um, good evening to a caller earlier, Justin. He's got to be kidding, right? <laughs> I think if, if Point God was this segment, Sal from Queens would have won. Yes. Very good. Sal was very good. No, he brought ruckus. Uh, Nobody brought ruckus like Brian today. No, no. He wanted, you, you know, as the kids say, he chose violence. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing? That's a thing. Is that what they say? <laughs> That's what they say. He, cho he woke up and chose violence today. <laughs> Jacob, you would agree it's perfect, perfect assessment, right? Oh, absolutely. Sometimes perfect. it's not a bad choice. I mean, again, you know, I, I, well, well, you know what? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. <laughs> it will. Um, all right, well, we're gonna go. We'll come right back to that. Let's 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 take one break to hear from Aaron Rodgers. That was, uh, you know, the Jets were the story of the day till about I don't know, five ten, five five oh nine. Yeah, right yeah. around that region. <laughs> Um, here's, Another region. Here's Aaron Rodgers on Pat McAfee talking about the throws pregame yesterday. No, we're not back. That's just my stress reliever. That's just me feeling a little bit normal, feeling like you know I'm back, a uh, member of the team almost. But no, that's just me relieving some stress and having some fun pregame. And how about his comments after the game to the Chargers' Derwin James, where he said he'd be back in a few weeks? I've known Derwin for a while. We got the same agency. Really have a lot of respect for him and his game. He came over and dabbed me up during the game. and Good to see him after the game. I didn't realize that was going to get caught there. I mean, obviously, that was said with a little tongue-in-cheek there. It'd be nice to be able to be back in a couple weeks. That's probably not anywhere near a realistic timeline. But a couple is, you know, could be a few, could be a lot. It was more of a phrase that didn't have a a specific timetable but yeah i said it smiling joking you know he was talking about how you know he's excited for me to get back on the field at some point i joked it'd be a few weeks but obviously it's gonna be more than a couple weeks now we also had a tremendous uh conversation with jets head coach robert sala strongly suggest you go on ahead and listen to the podcast which is available yep and hear the tone because it was certainly a, a different sounding Robert Sala today. Sounded legitimately angry, not but, but not nasty. He just, not, he not, sounds, not nasty to us. Sounds beaten at all. down, but beaten down, Don, uh, Michael. And I would say not as second time you've called me Don. So don't say you've had a clean show. Second time, just not drop worthy. <laughs> but would you say this? He wasn't as defensive as he can be about Zach. He, he was giving a lot more credence to the criticism today. Mm -hmm. Is that fair, Don? Very fair. He's reading the room. He could not defend him today. You know what I wonder about Zach Wilson and his time in New York? What's that? No, I think he's very much alive. Well, they don't have a lot of options. Well, he's going to have it's him and Brian Cashman. Jobs for life.
All right, well, without any further ado, because there are people, you know, a lot of people get in the car at 6 o'clock for ENN. Yeah, people work. They don't know anything that's happened with uh, Brian Cashman. Well, that's why the Yankees spoke at 5. They wanted to clear the room for 6. So, so I... I came into today not looking forward to hearing from the Yankees because, generally speaking, they babble on and don't say much uh, in these situations. And we come away trying to, you know, figure out what they were, glean right, something. trying to interpret it. You glean and interpret the nothingness. Well. Not today. Not, well, not today. You know, first, let's start with uh, Hal Steinbrenner. Hal, Hal came with a tone I think we all were not surprised by, given his personality. Here's Hal summing up the 2023 season. I think Cash summed it up. I mean, it was awful. I mean, we we accomplished nothing. We we didn't win a division, didn't make it to the playoffs, didn't win a series in the playoffs, much less a championship. Uh, you know, I, I went over the winning record. That's a requirement as far as I'm concerned. So the fans uh, didn't get anywhere close to what they deserve. But, you know, we're all very passionate about this. We're, we're working our ass off. And, um, you know, we're going to do everything we can to right the ship for 2024, but uh, bad year. Okay. Now let's take that right into Brian Cashman talking about his thoughts on the state of the operation, as it were. I've been here with the Yankees for a long time. Whether that's a good thing, what our fans or perception want to say or not, I'm proud of our operation. I think we have a great group of baseball people. I think we have a very strong process that has served us well up until what happened this particular season. You know, certainly that cause for evaluation, that does cause for self-reflection, which always will be the case regardless. Uh, we do that even when we're flying high. We had 99 wins the previous year and, and got knocked out in the AFCS, but it didn't stop me from onboarding two great baseball people. So this winter we go back at the wheel and it's now about 24 and we look to be a phoenix rising out of the ashes to find a way at the end of the day that's the challenge every year so it's what we're going through right now is no different you know than any other season but this year the big difference is we didn't punch a ticket to the postseason we didn't get a chance to take a shot at the title because we took ourselves out of it you know earlier and he, he went on he spoke a little bit more about how he's proud of the people they have there I think we have good baseball people, whether they're pro scouts, whether they're coaches, whether they're the manager, whether they're the general manager, whether they're analytics guys. I think we have good people. I'm getting permission requests all over the place. We just lost our bench coach to the Mets as a manager. I've got analytics guys trying to be poached to other clubs right now. Our player development program, no different than other places. But again, reinforcement that we got good people. I'm proud of our people and I'm proud of our process. Doesn't mean we're firing all cylinders. Doesn't mean we're the best in class. But I think we're pretty f good personally. And I'm proud of our people, and I'm also looking forward to 24 being a better year than 23. You know, one thing I would say to Brian, you, you know you're being recorded. You, you know that kids are going to listen to it. I mean, well, why the tough guy act by dropping F-bombs? Uh, you're in a media situation. I mean, oh. when we rip players for saying that, this is an executive. He, he shouldn't be saying that. He is mad. He's, he's legitimately mad that his job is being questioned. And his team is being questioned. And and you cannot survive as an executive being that defensive. Because that, that's what it does. I mean, there's video is. of him. It's not just right. writers who would like, they would scratch a, he, it's a bleep. He's being recorded but, but saying I, this. But I think it's pretty revealing, Michael, that he lost it. They had a month to sit on how they were going to put a face on this season. And that's what you came up with? It's stunning. It's stunning. Michael, it, it's uh, honestly, if, if I believe how to be... The person that you've described and that I've gotten to know on the air, he's got to be red hot right now. But don't you think that this was, you know, war gamed? He, he's not but, going. But, Brian's not going rogue. But, but but why why would that be the strategy? I don't know. I, mean, I you don't still have know. To, I mean, you, you, Hal has to. Hal watches this show. The Yankees monitor what the fans are saying. The fans are not just some yo-yos. These are people that buy tickets. You want them to buy Amazon, uh, the Prime, to watch games on uh, during the course of the season. You want them to buy jerseys. You want them to stay fans. You know how upset they are. And you know how painfully Hal talks about the fans, and he's living and dying with the team the same as the fans are. How can they be in a room and say, all right, let's have Brian say this. This is going to be huge for us. This is really going to sell tickets. This is really going to get the fans all excited about the 2023-24 uh, season coming up. Let's have Brian basically mother blank everyone about how great they're. Like, how could they all say, yeah, that's a good idea. No, no, let's do that. There's no way that was the, the decision. I think he went rogue. I, You know what I really think, Michael? I think he was he was ticked off that there had to be even the thought of an audit. 
He's probably upset that Hal is talking about it being a failed season. I think he believes he's beyond reproach, should never be criticized, should never be questioned. And how dare you even have the audacity to get upset after one lousy season where we still finished two games above 500. I do think he went rogue. Now, he did say something later that I, I kind of agree with, and people don't, and they never like to hear this, Peter. Which one? He was asked about why the team struggled, and he goes, you want to say it's an excuse, it's a fact, meaning injuries. I believe the Yankees make the playoffs if they don't get injured, but their injuries are a part of the problem. Correct. We've seen it year after year. Year after year, whether they're, they're training the wrong way, uh, whether a health and science department leaves something, I'm not sure. But, yeah, injuries play. You, you, I love people. Well, there are no excuses. That's nonsense. Of course there are excuses, and there are facts. Aaron Judge missing a third of the season set the team into a spiral. Uh, Carlos Rodon missing the first half of the season out of spring training was a gigantic loss for them. Frankie Montas was a gigantic loss. Nestor Cortez was a gigantic loss. But you can't just sweep that under the rug because injuries have played too big a part for the Yankees over the last five or six years. It has to stop. But, yeah, that is a fact. That's why they didn't make the playoffs. If none of those players got hurt, they would have finished close to the Orioles for first place in the American League East, in my opinion. Yeah, and that in 250 will get you on the subway. Uh, here's Bron here's uh, 290 to get on the subway. Sorry about that. Yeah, going on. Here's Brian Cashman on uh, the Yankees not being analytically driven. People talk about we're analytically driven, right? We have the smallest analytics department in the American League East. Is that a shocker to you guys? We have the largest pro scouting department in all of baseball. Is that a shocker to you uh, to everybody? Shouldn't be, but no one's doing their deep dives. They're just throwing ammunition and, and bullshit and accusing us of being run analytically. Analytics is an important spoke in our wheel, but it, it should be in everybody's wheel, and it really is, is an important spoke in every operation that's having success. There's not one team that's not using it. We're, we're no different. But to be said we're guided by analytics as a driver, it's a lie. But that's what people want to say. I know I can't change that narrative. All I can continue to do is say bullshit not true, but I will guarantee it's important and it, we utilize it along with our pro scouting opinions, along with our amateur scouting opinions, and yes, yeah, sometimes we do better than, and sometimes we do worse with some of our decisions. Sometimes they don't work out, but that's also part of the process. And we've had, obviously, our fair share in the more recent two seasons that haven't worked out. You know, some of it because of injuries, but um, let's remember that when the uh, Aaron Judge has his scheduled day off mm -hmm. uh, during the, the Mets series after going four for four with two home runs the night before. You know, if you're not that analy analytically driven, then why don't you do what I said yesterday? Make Buck Showalter your bench coach. Why would you Why would you avoid having a guy, a baseball lifer, who knows so much and would be Aaron Boone's Don Zimmer? Why wouldn't you do that? Because he's not all in on analytics, which he is, by the way, but he also thinks there's a heartbeat to the game. Hi, all right, Brian, I believe you. I don't think you're going to lie to people. Hire Buck Showalter. He's out there. Let him be your bench coach. I don't think Aaron Boone would mind having a guy, a genius like Buck Walter being the bench coach. The Mets just took your bench coach. Take their manager. And talk about, like, a score. Talk about a win public relations-wise. Today's not a win public relations-wise. No, I would say not. Bring in Buck Walter as your bench coach. It, it, it's, it, it was spoken by a guy that will never lose his job and to a fan base that Brian assumes will never go away. Right, and he just said, "Well, they'll come back. Well, we'll start winning, and they'll, the building will be full, and and they'll they'll be the sheep that I expected them to be." Watch out, man! Watch out, because if you get off to a slow start, they're already turning on you now. Yankee fans are very supportive of their team, Michael, but there were dark, there were dark days not long ago. Take a look at the year when Don Mattingly yeah. had six grand slams. Don Mattingly, yeah. one of the greatest players you'll ever see, especially yeah, during that five-year run. Empty seats. He was yeah. hitting those grand slams into empty upper decks. Oh, I know. My my memory always told me that that team was hard. No, that was and then a long time ago. They, 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 they were not. They were actually but, over 500 every year. You know. And then somebody said, no, "Don't worry, Don. They sent out the uh, season ticket requests in September." Mid conversation. Well, where? But but where where were they in September? Like you know, so they weren't in the they weren't racing oh, no, heard, for the playoffs or whatever. I heard, yeah, an, I heard that too. Yeah, the email went out, out today while out. he was talking. But you know, the the, the the people, the um, I guess what he was trying to say is the schedule came out in September. People could, people were down on this team last year. They were down on the team going into the season. So I don't know if they're gonna be lining up to buy tickets now. The Yankee fans are die hard, and a lot of them will go. So it's not gonna be it's gonna be a ghost town. But Michael, it could be affected. The ratings could be affected on yes. The attendance could be affected. 
Don't always count on your fan base just coming in like sheep because when they've had enough, they will voice their displeasure by not going. Um, here's last thing we'll play from Cash. Um, on sifting through what's real and what's crap. We lost enough not to make the postseason, but then what happens with a big market, you get a lot of people with a lot of opinions you're mm -hmm. getting from outside the organization, Yo -yo's that are like throwing you. daggers from inside the organization, different people that are actually you work with. See, that, the that one that, strong uh, can you pause well, that for a moment? This way sure, versus that we'll way. Start playing. Inside the organization? So does he think that people are aiming for him inside the organization? Mm -hmm. that, that's a that's comment. A that, that's quote. a big comment him, by him. So he thinks there are people inside the organization that don't like the way they're doing it. Maybe he was specifically mm -hmm. going at you there. Oh, well, or, you think I'm inside the organization? Well, no, no. But you're inside of Jace, and he talked about people outside in the market and the media, and then he went to the organization. Well, well, it was hovering was, around you there, pal. Was that targeted at uh, 99? Wasn't 99 very critical? Changes need to be made? Oh. He better not be targeting 99. Well, that's, 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 not, that's but, a bold but strategy, Kyle. But did, did, <laughs> did Aaron Judge not say... That they need to look at the way things they are did, done. He did. He did. So inside, and he, is Aaron Judge not in the organization? Last uh, so time I checked, he was. Were those negotiations all lovey-dovey between Brian and Aaron last year? Is that a shocker to you guys? Is that a shocker to you, Brian? Is that a shocker to you guys? So you're going. So now you're going after Judge. No, I don't think I, I won't wouldn't. Have it. I wouldn't say that. I think <laughs> <laughs> Don's already decided. No, so. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But don't dismiss it out of hand. Uh, Do I, I have proof? No, but. He did say within the organization, Judge was in the organization That's a saying fact. that she, changes had to be made. I don't think it's that. I, All right. You I think it's somebody in the front office. All right. You don't think it is, but it's not impossible, right? It kind of checks some boxes. But the point is, Michael, by doing that, now you get people like me thinking he's going after Judge. And you know perception becomes reality. And you just said Good it on luck the winning that face-off, by the way. Be like trying to win a face-off without a stick. Popularity contest between Aaron Judge and Brian Cashman? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Yeah, so you actually agree with something I've come up with. No, it, it works really well. It re really, it's some of, your, some of your best work. Um, I've used it on games, too. It's a bold strategy, Cotton? Yeah. All right, let's start talking about some other things, shall we? Is there anything else? I'm really? having too much fun talking about that. I mean, you want to, is there more to no, it? We're we're, we, realistically, we, are, we have a week full of this. Yes. Let's be honest. I think the we Jets, have months. The, well, yeah, the Jets may not even play their game on Sunday. I'm you, know, you think they might phone it in? They're going to go. Not only are they not going to flex the game, they're going to remove the game from the schedule. So NBC is going to have, like, it's a wonderful life. Yeah. They'll just say, you know what, Raiders, Jets, who oh, on no, earth no, wants no, no, to no, see no. this? No, 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 no. The perfect thing. Raiders, Jets, play Heidi. Heidi, play Heidi. Oh. Hey, do you know that story? The Heidi story, yeah. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure. There's always a new audience. People don't know. It's a great and has puzzle. Heidi Gardner of SNL introduce it? I think that's a reach what really? you just did there, yeah. Because most, I mean, Heidi Gardner's a, a very talented person. Very. I don't know if it would play, although it's NBC. Yeah. It's right there. Are they back this week? Yes. They were off last week. Yes. They were at the Nets game. But, the whole crew. But, well, a bunch. Who? Like four of them. Sarah Sherman was there. She's my favorite, by the way. No, Sarah Sherman, I think, was there. Dismukes was there. Really? Dismukes? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, there's, Andrew. You, can't, you know you can't have a Nets game without Dismukes in the building. His calling Andy. Yeah, Andy Dismukes. Um... All right, a little some a couple of football notes. Sure, why not? It's still going on. Uh, the Titans have uh, announced that your favorite, Will Levis, will be the quarterback the rest of the season. I think it's Levi's. So that means <laughs> even be. if Tannehill comes back from his high ankle sprain, no, 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 no. Uh, sit down, Tannehill. You'll be uh, you'll be backing up, my friend, my antenna Um Let's see. So many things here, Michael, and and yet there's so much temptation with all these pieces of Yankee audio. Um, there's more Yankee audio? No, I've got so many. Well, why don't you play the injury one? That's good. Cashman talking about the injuries. Well, I also have the the, the Cashman defending Gallo and Gray, which is pretty yeah, we already did that. I know. All right, then play the injury one because I don't see it. Here it is. Dead on arrival, why our season got derailed. If you don't make that a significant reason, it is. You want to say it's an excuse? It's a fact. You want me to sit there and say, essentially, that that didn't happen and us missing certain guys along the way didn't affect us on the wind golem? Like, I can't I do that. I don't think anybody disputes that they, it didn't have a significant impact. What I'm asking is, besides underperformance and injuries, 
what else did you guys do? That, that yeah, but I already told you I'm not going to tell you what else was going on in that meeting. So you're asking me to put you in that room. I'm not doing that, which I already said in the beginning of this. So we had organizational meetings. They did get heated. We had a lot of discussions. Some stuff oh, we agreed they? on. Some stuff we disagreed on. And we unpacked a lot of different stuff. Some of it we're making some adjustments. Some of it we actually recommitted to. So I don't know what else to tell you. And again, I go back to it doesn't matter what I say. And it doesn't matter what Hal says. It doesn't matter what Boone says. It matters what we do. Because at the end of the day, it's all about wins. All about the win. That's what he should have said, because that's the most important thing he said. Right. It's all about the wins, and you didn't have them. Right. That, well, that's uh, the problem with the whole thing. Like, Don and I were saying, we sort of enjoy the sort of just sheer arrogance that he that he put on the line. He was almost like a heel wrestler. The problem is it's all measured in the performance, and we saw the performance, and it wasn't very good. And I believe that the injuries played a huge factor in what happened, but... Don always used to joke about this when they said, well, this is a big injury. Well, somebody else is going to step up in the 30 home run. Every year they fill they injuries. Did. This year they didn't. But, um, but you, you organizations usually don't go there. Yeah, I understand that literally injuries are an excuse, but you're supposed to put a bold face on it, the depth. Now, Seinfeld 4 believes oh, that, he's good. that how, that, um, excuse me, Brian was talking about A-Rod, Jeter, and Reggie. No, those guys are former Yankees. They're not in the organization. And Jeter, has, about, Jeter has not killed the Yankees. A Alex told, has. No, but, but Jeter talked about the analytics and right. people thought he was but taking Alex shots. But Alex has really but, gone up in but, it on Brian. But Jeter works for Fox now. A-Rod works for Fox. ESPN for now. And then Fox. And then Reggie was is with the Astros. He said within the organization. He was not talking. I don't believe he was talking about those three guys. Um, hey, let's. You know, Don called the Knicks game last night. No way, really? Yeah, you know, they won. You do the Knicks game? Uh, yeah. Yes, I did. And it was a big win, and Julius Randle actually played good basketball. And, and, uh, from what I've heard from the Knicks, Randle wants Don at the mic every game. Wow. Because he's had his best me? game. Yeah. All right, that may be unavailable. Let's hear, let's hear a little of Donnie's calls. Here comes Harden. Kicks it back out. Highland to Powell. Back out to the corner, but it's intercepted. Transition time for Barrett, and he hammers it all. Don, Michael, you this guy knows what he's doing. He's very good. <laughs> Stop. Quickly, straight away. Oh. Now the Hartenstein, the big dunk on the alley-oop, and it's 85-76. Great answer for the Knicks. That's pretty cool. Uh, oh, that's R.J. Cool. Barrett. I'm sorry, that was a call. That's what One more call. R.J. Barrett thought I, was, I sounded pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, he did. One more call from Don. Here's Mitch Robinson. Randall, top of the arc. Handles the ball at the key. Now to the foul line. Drives to the right block. Still with it with seven seconds to go on the shot clock. Underneath the Robinson. An emphatic dunk. 106.90 with 345 to go. Are you kidding me? You based the call. And I, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what. You're not going to confuse Monica McNutt with Dave Malone. She's not stepping all over these calls. I, I, I'm a big fan of Maloney, so I will not say that. No. <laughs> it's Holy not an insult crap. to Maloney. Well, I it's think, a compliment uh, to me. I don't yeah, think you ever said man. you weren't a fan. I love Dave. But there was some steppage. The Monica had no steppage. <laughs> yeah, no. She she knows what she's doing. Wow. What a day, Don. What she's, a call. She's, she's a lot of fun, too. Yeah, and, and by the way, you know what Don's calling tomorrow? What? The debut of Wemby in That's New right. York. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> kidding you. That is 18 seconds left. You better say goodbye. That'll do it for ENN, which is sponsored by, of course, Security Dodge. 24 7 at securitydodge.com. Go see Michelle Scalisi, grab a t shirt, come get some during their Black Friday sale. Come get some. Come Catch with Fallout, Orlovsky tomorrow. Woo. See you, everybody. That's a wrap on the show for today. Don't forget, tomorrow night, starting at 6.30, our coverage of the Nets and Clippers gets underway with an hour-long pregame show. For all of us here on the Michael K. Show, this is Chris Sheeran saying have a great night. We will see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock.